Good to see you everyone. My name is Robbie Howell and I am joined by two fine fellows. Please do introduce Ooh. yourselves, my friends. Fine fellows. I am Chris Fazekas. I'm Patrick Sabian. And they are going to be joining me for an Enclave mission. They have never played the game before. This is their first time experiencing it. And we're going to go through the entire process from character creation to mission completion. Let us begin at the beginning with some character creation stuff. First of all, do you guys have an idea of what class you want to play? I do. I, I think I do, yes. Librarian. Librarian. Go librarian. Excellent choice. I was thinking Gunslinger. Gunslinger is also an excellent choice. So I'd say begin your character sheets by putting down the class that you are playing. You can start to think of a name. It's fine if you wait till the end to do that, because it's often the hardest part. Uh, the first thing that you're going to be doing, now that you have your character, is you're going to be putting down your personality. You have uh, three major personality traits, two of which are defined by your class, and one of which you pick. So the two that are defined by your class are based on the class's stats. So for the librarian, intelligence and spirit, for the gunslinger, skill and sensory. Uh, I'm not going to expect you to remember off the top of your head what traits those are, so I'm going to pull up the rule set and we are going to go through so that you can have a good look Sweet. at what your options are. Because one of these you'll get to pick. As I said, two of them are predefined for you and one of them you have full choice over. So, for the librarian, your two picks are opinionated as one personality trait. That's the intelligence trait. And then compassionate as the spirit trait. So those two elements of your personality are set. For a gunslinger, the skill trait is confident. And the sensory trait is alert. Okay. Now, for your last trait, you get to pick from the full list of 12. Uh, these will have implications for your stats as well as for how your character behaves. I'll go through it. Vitality has a trait indulgent. Might is forceful. Resilience is tough. Spirit is compassionate. Arcane is ambitious. Will is self-controlled. Sensory is alert. Reflex is smooth. Vigor is enthusiastic. Skill is confident. Intelligence is opinionated. And luck is carefree. You can choose based on which of those sounds most fun to act, which stat you're most interested in going towards, whichever you choose. Or which one pairs best with what you have currently. I'm going with pure role play, and I'm going to do luck. We love you for it. Wow. Carefree wow. is your final personality trait. Put it on down. Arcane, ambitious. Let's Lovely. go. I'm an opinionated and... Ambitious, <laughs> yet compassionate like Barry. All right, that's the way to do it. Personal challenge. Here we go. Next one. Alert and carefree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you see something. You're like, man, I don't care. Yeah, yeah like, that sounds pretty cool. <laughs> but you see it. Like, <laughs> that is something that is happening. It is not my problem. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, now we're going to put down the stats. You can abbreviate these however you want. Remember, your character does have access to all of the stats and is competent within them, but we're going to talk about how they become supernatural. Okay. So, again, vitality, might, resilience, spirit, arcane, will, sensory, reflex, vigor, skill, intelligence, and luck. The first step, uh, in Enclave we record uh, stats with pluses, yep. uh, and so stats start at default. It kind of puts you like just slightly above human average if we had to put a benchmark on it. Okay. One plus is like good, if not quite elite. Okay. Two pluses is exceptional. Three pluses is bordering on completely unrealistic <laughs> if we're talking real world standards. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, because of that, firstly, for the uh, stats that your class comes with, uh, intelligence for you and skill for you, you're starting with two pluses. Bam. Those are your most favored stats. Okay. Then your secondary stats, spirit, sensory, you have one plus. Okay. And lastly, the stats that you picked, uh, namely luck oh. and arcane, yep. you get one. Lastly, you have two pluses. You can distribute however you want. You cannot bring any stat above three. So you can put the pluses anywhere you want. On any stat, ones that you already have a plus in, ones that you don't have a plus in. Pure role play. Luck is going to be at three pluses. <laughs> oh, God. 
Luck is admittedly extremely fun. Like we can do a lot with that. And uh, I've heard people say that the gunslinger is secretly a plus luck class. Oh, okay. Nice. Okay. Nice. okay. It's I would argue like the fourth if we're talking like trying to be as objective as possible, that's probably like the fourth best set on the class. It's quite quite powerful. Uh, how have you distributed it? I've got two in spirit, two in intelligence. I put one in luck, and I've got my one in arcane. Beautiful. That's what I got. Nice. Glass cannon. Mm, just what you like it. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Next thing is you are going to be putting down your gear. Your character can be assumed to have uh, a couple of you know, clothes and stuff like that that aren't like consequential, but the gear that we, are be we will be listing all has blatant supernatural properties. Okay. Uh, to start with, you're going to have three pieces of default gear, and then you get to choose one piece of elective gear. For the gunslinger, you have a duster, a bandolier, and a revolver. And for the librarian, you have scholarly raiment, reading glasses, and a book bag. What was the third one? I apologize. No problem. Uh, the third one, gotta remember which order I put them in, is the revolver. Okay. So to give you an idea of the supernatural properties on these, uh, a duster, uh, besides giving you protection against the environment and hostile mental effects, like supernatural imposed fear, for example, will also hide your face so long as you calmly and deliberately do not interact with an interested party. Oh, I like that. The bandolier holds shots for your guns and will magically refill a few shots uh, when you first come within arm's reach of a dead enemy. Oh, I want an holster. I like that. Uh, and then your revolver, as you might imagine, is a revolver as standard, but it also supernaturally improves your hand speed while operating it. Did I? Are you just broken right now? 100%. The library, on the other hand, scholarly raiment increases your veracity in others' eyes. Huh, Do okay. not underestimate how good that is. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> Reading glasses make it such that when you are focusing on something, you are very resistant to being interrupted. Like, say okay. you are trying to, let's do a very basic example, disarm a bomb, not that your character is competent at that. Yep. If someone tries to, you know, interrupt you, yep. your hand's not going to slip. Gotcha. Secondly, it also lets you speed read at an incredible rate. Like, blitz through a page of a book in seconds. Okay. Uh, and then the book bag uh, holds a variety of books that you can access with a pitch in-game. This works like a luck pitch, but it's saying, I would like to have a book on this topic, please. Okay, 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 okay. We do not define what is inside until you choose to look into it. <laughs> okay. For elective gear for the gunslinger, again, you get to pick one of these. First of all, the Sharps rifle. It's based on a real weapon. It is uh, falling block action, so it has that like crank underneath the gun that you use to reload it. Uh, the ha it has a supernatural uh, property where you can zoom in your vision as you sight down the barrel. Okay. Two, you can have the coach gun. This is like a light shotgun. has two shots before you have to reload it. Uh, and after you fire with a coach gun, you can instantly dash a short distance. It's, it's as though you're skating along the ground at rapid speed in a way that completely defies physics. I think I might do that. Lastly, a saddled horse. It is a horse. It is loyal to you. And you can access things inside of its saddlebags via a pitch. Oh. So you get my backpack. Good job. On a horse. That's so I can carry you. Yeah. Oh. Elective gear for the librarian. <laughs> Let's hear this. The quill pen. This lets you magically write in mid-air. The things that you write are tangible but are unbelievably delicate and fade away after a little bit of time. But there is no limit on how much you can do this. Okay. Okay. Two, a scanner. This is a little uh, Magitech device that projects like a little light at close range, revealing things not normally visible to the naked eye. Okay. Things like... If someone's using magical invisibility, for example, or if there's fingerprints, reveals those, or like uh, footprints that have since faded. Mm. Lastly, okay. memos. These are like a, a little magical letter. You can write a very short message and then teleport it to anyone who you know the location of, but you only have a finite number. Mm. Oh, that's a hard choice. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. There's some wild gear. What's making it easier for me is I'm going with the role play. So if you had something in mind, go with the option that plays into it. If that now my sense. quill. Yeah. Anything I write, so if I write apple, an apple is there, or is it? It is like you are writing the word in the air, but you could also draw a little two-dimensional apple. Right. Oh. 
It's like, imagine it like you're leaving ink in midair that stays there and actually feels kind of like ink, but just, you know, if you, it'll blow. Oh, that fragile. Okay. Very, so, very fragile. So instead of telling <clears throat> someone you don't like them, you can literally write it. Middle finger. Just draw a middle finger. Yeah, I like it. And then blow it away. Um, oh, man, I don't know. The librarian is exceptional at communicating information. And so both the quill pen and the memos do that very explicitly yeah. in very different ways. Yeah. The memos are more obvious and have a lot of tactical advantage, but the quill pen has a lot of what we like to call implications. Yes. <laughs> <sighs> All right, I made my choice. All right, what have you picked? Memo. I'm going to do the memos. Excellent. Because of that, uh, you have a set of 10 of these. God. And I should note that um, you don't have to worry about like explicitly noting that they come with a pen. It can be a sin that you have a pen. Okay. Person. That's not what we call a consequential item. Especially because you have a book bag. I, I suppose if you like fell in a river or something, then we might question whether you're, you still have a working pen on you, but yeah. don't have to go into that much detail. I'll just use the fallen blood. That's all. That's the way to do it. What is going to be your pick, my good man? I think I'm going to go with Coach Gun. A very wow. fun, wow. dynamic okay. role. Right. A dash in. Role play. Yeah. 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 Okay. Two bird on over here. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Nearly done. Next thing is to put down your abilities. You don't have to make any fancy decisions for these, but it's good to have them listed down so you know what your capacities are at the moment. Yep. Mm -hmm. If you need a reminder, the librarian's abilities are fun fact. Oh no! Knowledge is power and catalog. The gunslinger's abilities, I'll pull them up in case you need to look at them, mm -hmm. are trick shot, standoff, and shootout. Okay. If you guys want to go over any of these right now, you're welcome to. Yeah. Also, happy to clarify questions mid-game. Yeah. I pulled it up so that I'm not... Oh, perfect. Yeah. I was going to say the same thing. My memory's not good enough. <laughs> no, 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 like, referencing sheets mid-game is just how you do it. Yes. Um, okay. Bam, there it is. While you are doing so, you can start to think about a little bit of backstory. I won't be demanding much of any kind, but uh, any details you can give me as to your character's physical appearance, Yo. and what they did slash do outside of working for the Enclave. Love it. Can be quick, can be like a sentence or two. But for physical appearance, that's actually pretty important. Like, things like height and features. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Hmm. Now, for knowledge is power, is that using my pack that I have, or that's its own that's thing? That's its own thing. You are conjuring that out of nowhere. It is a magical book where the books you pull out of the bag, though you access them magically, they are entirely mundane. These abilities are pretty fire. They are really good. Catalog? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. Okay, that's helping my backstory. All right. So you guys have a decent idea of your abilities or any other clarifications? Pretty good. In that case, yeah. if you can put down, again, just a sentence or two in terms of your physical appearance, and any backstory or current day to day. How how intense do you want this to be? You can be as intense <laughs> or as light as you want. I love it all. Okay. Um, I personally favor the intense, but I can easily work with whatever whatever you're putting down. You know. Hmm. <laughs> oh, you're doing something? I'm going to pop the back. Yes, sir. Yeah.
Okay, Debbie, let me know when you feel like you're in a good place with this. I think I'm good. Excellent. I'm going we too will deep for you. Perfectly fine. We will hold the full description until I am starting to design the mission so okay. that you guys can share with everyone uh, what okay. you have come to. Okay. Okay. Uh, in the meantime, any other thoughts or questions about other topics, even if they are relatively minor, especially about things like your abilities or items or stats? As it stands for me, no. I Excellent. feel like uh, that any questions will arise as, as we're playing. Yeah, you're playing an extremely pitch-heavy character because you have the, the luck, the arcane, and the librarian, <laughs> which is already a very pitch-heavy class. Uh, and good good at talking. Yeah, exactly. Pitches really reward people who are very good at like quickly thinking on their feet. Yes, this is my character. <laughs> uh, it's one of those things where like if you want, you can play an enclave character that like completely avoids pitching. Yeah. Um, it's not hard, even if you're going to be like kind of wasting your luck in arcane stats, but that's fine. You have ten other stats that are going to be perfectly useful. Uh, but for people who are willing to kind of like take the step and try it out, pitching is a really really important mechanic. Yeah. All right, do you think you have a decent setup for your character? Yeah, I do. Any final questions? Um, is there anything that you have to do to indicate pitching, or basically like when you get into whatever action you're doing, your pitch is whatever you're saying in that moment? You can be explicit about it, especially because pitching is, uh, pitching is typically quite specific. Like for luck, you can be either explicit, say, can I pitch that blank, you know? Or you can kind of weave it into a thing. My favorite example is, let's say your character is Hiding from, a, hiding from a dog, and your character is kind of a coward. You could say, in character in your internal monologue, is that big scary dog still outside of the door? Because that's, it's obvious what you're going for. Yep. There's a clear pitch there, and there's no ambiguity to me of what you want. That's the big thing with pitches, right. you need to make it clear what you want. You're basically like trying to incite, is the universe going to answer my question? Huh. It's, huh. it's all about, you're kind of like contributing a piece to the story with a pitch, but you're doing it in a way that lets me say no if it doesn't really fit my vision. It's like you don't hear it anymore. That's <laughs> the big one. It's like, oh, it's like, well, that's like, that's like, that's like, that's a huge part of it is that oftentimes you won't get a clear yes or no. Yeah. Like, sometimes you do. There's totally going to be times, but I love living within the ambiguity. Yep. Uh, yep. In, in terms of, in I, terms of story time. I so that. you get the idea. <laughs> you, it's clear that. you guys understand what's going on here. So focus words. I'm going to be using these two from each of you to generate your mission on the spot. Oh, um, my goal is going to be to shoot for a mission that will take about an hour to an hour and a half out of game. Uh, because of that, what are you going to give me? They can be anything. Doesn't matter how silly. Doesn't matter how outlandish. Doesn't matter how disconnected from a fantasy universe. All right, mine's pretty straightforward, but all right. Yeah, far you want to do like one, 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 one? Yeah, do one, 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 one. Sure. So I'll start with barbecue. Barbecue. Excellent. Dragon. Great. I'm changing my second one to banana peel. Oh, you son of a... <laughs> I'm keeping mine. Sports. <laughs> well, just sports. Did you want me to have fun? Yes. <laughs> I'm going to have so much fun. Okay. I have, I have roughly a trillion ideas. While I'm thinking... I'd like you guys to introduce your characters both to the audience and to each other. You can also take the opportunity to discuss entirely out of character things like strategy, synergy, what your characters might need from, you, uh, from each other, how your characters might react to each other. Okay. Take all the liberty now. Your characters have no idea what you are talking about. So far away, I'm going to so do some writing. I am a librarian, as you guys know. My name is Damien Shoebuckle. Love it. <laughs> I am roughly 5'8". I have silver hair from a failed research experiment. Um, I have a long brown beard, and another thing of note is I have an owl pin on my bag. Um, I am dedicated to knowledge and the search of knowledge. Um, once I was an orphan street rat, a librarian caught me stealing some food, took me in to work to pay off my debt, and that was 14 years ago. Wow. Never stopped being a librarian. Wow. You are real deep. Bro, yes. He invited a writer to come to this, okay? I knew what I was getting into. <laughs> okay. um, that's all I got. I feel like we're going to mesh well because I do have a uh, POS upbringing. You know, I, I like to steal. Oh, I like to, oh. to do what I need to do to survive. But, yeah. I, I apologize if you said this. How old is your character? Uh, we're going to go with 28. Nice. I, I probably should do something. Or, oh, man. Let's go put her. You know what? Do it. Just do it. Do it. What do we got? 
Right. So, my name is Hingle McCringleberry. God damn it. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I'm a gunslinger. His first name, um, Hingle? I'm a rap. Hingle McCringle. I know, but it's my first name. He goes by McCringle. Oh, God damn it. I'm going to laugh. And when he says in McCringle. That's an inside joke for everyone. How do you spell that? <laughs> yeah, good one. <laughs> H I N G L E. Excellent. And then exactly how it sounds McCringleberry. McCringleberry. But he goes McCringleberry. Okay? He has a red. Uh, and how do you spell your cousin's name? Shoe buckle I can get. Damien. D A M I E N. Yeah. The demon. The demon. <laughs> demon shoe buckle. <laughs> um, so he's around like six foot. He's the typical gunslinger look. Mm. Pretty much because he's going to try to go for that look. Okay. Because of who he is. He's like scruffy, he has dark hair, but you don't know exactly the color because like dirty, dusty, mm-hmm. um, from his traveling. Uh, does he have spurs? Of course. Okay. So of course. Know. Sounds good. If you hear the jingle from... <laughs> from a Kringle! From a Kringle. If you hear the jingle from a Kringle! <laughs> yep. You better, you best go run. Okay? <laughs> oh so he's around like 27. Um, even he is not really not, not positive on his age. He had a he has a similar POS upbringing. Like he had that drunk dad, that not around mother was dead when he was a teenager. He basically just ended up going into drifting, and he would just go from town to town, kind of just trying to make merc money, essentially. And he's been involved in duels. He's been involved in you know doing X, Y, and Z, but typically tries to be on the good side. He's not trying to be a criminal, but you know he gets involved in some not so great situations. Okay. However, his results are pretty much like near spotless. And from this, he's confident, borderline arrogant. But in reality, he is awful, just extremely lucky. So, like, it'll be something like if he goes to shoot someone and he misses, it happens to like go off a couple of pans and hit a different guy that was trying to attack him. <laughs> and then he is deluded enough and arrogant enough that he's like, that was on purpose mm-hmm. and okay. truly believe. I meant to do that. Okay. okay. Yeah. Um, but that's kind of that's kind of the overall character. It's just you know he had a PLS up green, kind of became a drifter at teenage years. You know, picked up a gun, has had good results. A lot of it's based on luck. Okay. <laughs> okay. That's a great introduction to your characters. Yeah. If you would. You can take the opportunity, like I said, to kind of discuss how your characters might enmesh and react to each other as well as what strategies you might take. I'll probably need another two minutes or so. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let's see. I think that you're probably... I feel like we're going to work well together um, because I am not shy of kicking down doors, um, doing dumb stuff. Um, okay, I'm like good, if you will. And I feel like... I feel but like I'll always have your back. <laughs> With your eyes closed. Fire it up. Uh, look, with my eyes closed, a hundred percent. You're a better hours. shot. You're a better shot. <laughs> okay. okay. Where I come from, we call that death. <laughs> yeah, I <laughs> Because I keep my eyes closed. It's high noon. Somewhere. <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> it's 3 30. It's somewhere. It's, it's high noon somewhere. somewhere. <laughs> That's the best one, like. Oh, okay. I mean, please <laughs> use that. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> God. Yeah, yeah, I feel like we're going to work well. Um, you know, I am very much, we're going to do right. We're not going to do wrong. I'm, uh, in, in the standard terminology, I would be a chaotic good. I'm going to kick down the doors that need to kick down, but it's for good reasons. Yeah. And you know, if someone's doing a little something unscrupulous, you do a little one of these. Mm. And then you're okay. And I like to know how things work, so I may stop us and be like, do that again. Hey, that's how that happened. I'll just light up and take a, a break on the wall. Oh, God. You don't even have to tell me what's going on. Oh, God. A cue silhouette of the cowboy leaning on the yeah, tree. Man. Yeah, got it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, are, now, are you a, a shoot first, ask questions later? Good question. Are, are you that type of an individual? Oh, or are you a. Uh, no, you gotta give exposition before you shoot anyone. <laughs> ah, monologue. Okay, okay. <laughs> Because the fact is, they need to know what's coming. Mm. Mm. Okay, I like that. You know, it's like, why didn't you bring an umbrella? Because the storm's brewing. Uh, I, I, I can be, I can have a hot trigger finger. Uh, that's fine. Uh, my mouth definitely writes checks that 
my scrawny body cannot keep that sometimes, but it's fine. I'll just finish my cigarette. <laughs> okay. I'll get right into the mud with you. Is there anyone from your past that we should be concerned of bumping into? And if pretty so, sure they're all dead. Okay, all right. Yeah, yeah. All right. If, if they Any come scorned up, lovers? most likely. Oh, like what? Any scorned lovers? Nah, because I pay for most of them. <laughs> all right, cool. Yeah. We're good. I need to hang out with you more. I just sit in the library. You will. I just sit in the library, man. <laughs> okay, I think I have something for you guys. Ah, oh, You are going to be going to the sunny coast of Gandrifron. This is a vacationer's paradise where cruise ships full of the wealthy elite from nearby nations go to participate in dragon watching. The gigantic, largely peaceful, aquatic titans of the Gandrifon coast come in many shapes, sizes, and colors, and some of them even allow you to touch them, making them a tourist hotspot and making gobs of money for the liners that uh, participate. Are they typically gentle creatures? Largely, it would seem so. Attacks have been now. <laughs> you are going to be going to one such cruise ship, that has made an unscheduled pit stop. They yeah. found a island yeah. that had previously not been known. Mm -hmm. The Ganophon Coast is not brilliantly explored. Okay. And on this island, they found a group of people who claimed to have been lost there, shipwrecked there, for almost a generation. Children have grown up on the island with no knowledge of the outside world. Okay. And there's a total of almost 20 people on this island. Okay. The captain, a woman named Chedris, is inclined to take them aboard. I apologize, what was the name? Chedris. Chedris. But something about these islanders is... gives her pause, we'll say. Mm. They are led by a man named Osigan, uh, and are said to live a kind of lazy and hedonistic lifestyle, born of being very bored on a very small island for a very large, uh, very long time. What was his name again? Ossigan. Okay. Your goal, your stated mission, is to discover the secret of the islanders and report it back to Chedris before she is compelled to make a decision on whether to take them aboard or not. Okay. She is being heavily pressured by her passengers, who obviously see a bunch of marooned people and are you know, like horrified, right? These are wealthy people who have, are not used to witnessing human suffering. And they are pressuring her <coughs> to take the, the islanders aboard. Okay. She has very finite time and is trying to talk them down to give herself more. Okay. okay. Uh, the islanders are very friendly, and many people from the, uh, from the cruise line have gone onto the island to hang out with them. Hmm. They, they have a, a, a gigantic, effectively like a luau set up. Mm. Uh, because the island is, for whatever reason, absolutely replete with food. Tons of food. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. Now, before we go further, questions. These questions can be questions that you guys have as players, or questions that your characters would ask. Yes. Your characters know the answers to all of these questions and the entirety of the mission statement. If your characters have never seen like a cruise liner or a dragon before, they would be brief on these. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, what's the name of our crew, of the boat we're on, ship we're on? Excellent question. Uh, this will be the SS Emerald. And now, have we or has anyone done any type of check on this food that is in overabundance on the island. Yes. Uh, Chedris herself has not tasted it. Okay. And a couple of her closer, like she does not have a big crew. Like yeah. the, these ships are quite sophisticated okay. and though not like modern tech, they use a lot of magic to supplement for it. Sure. So she doesn't need a big crew. Her crew, they kind of share her reservations, but there's not many of them. They haven't eaten the food. Okay. Many of the passengers have okay. and don't seem to be particularly perturbed by it. Okay. 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 Um, they have not witnessed any sudden, bizarre, dramatic side effects. Okay. Have we seen any other crashed ships littered across this island, or just that one? No. Not, actually, now that, you, now that you mention it, uh, there's not even been a report or a sighting of the ship that marooned the people on the island in the first place. 
And they said it again, they've been there for a long, like over a decade. Yeah. Any other questions? <clears throat> um, I guess, okay, so there's no site, so they claimed they were marooned yes. by a crash vessel. Okay. We are not currently on a crash vessel. No, you're on a it's cruise ship. The cruise ship will pull away in a heartbeat if it has the- Have uh, there been any reports of missing vessels before we even came into this area? There have been missing vessels in the past. Again, dragon attacks are not unheard of, though rare. Okay. Um, there's, it's totally plausible these people were wrecked. The Ganderfond coast, again, is not well explored. It really was only discovered uh, like within like the last decade or so. So okay. it's totally possible they wandered in before a lot was known about the region. Okay. Um, it's just no way of verifying. Okay. All or right. at least no way that has been uh, revealed to the enclave. As it and was. there's no like uh, odd increase in report of missing vessels in this area compared to others. Very, very Nowhere within the Ganderfond, like it's not safe out here in general. So no, yeah. not as compared to the Ganderfond coast. Right. In it's gotcha. There's nothing that would be a red flag. That's just something precise going on here. Um, and the the overabundance of food, um, just there's nothing odd about it other than the fact that there's an overabundance of it. Yes, I guess I'll throw in one final thing, which is that the the passengers, as you might expect can suffer from seasickness. Yeah. Something that the crew have reported is that since certain passengers who are known to have had terrible seasickness taste the food, they have had zero symptoms. Ah, uh, Dramamine food, got it. We love Dramamine in this household. <laughs> <laughs> Dramamine is a hero in my household. Do we notice, or have we heard, or do we know, is there any type of time dilation reports where if it's night, is it actually night on the island? That's or a brilliant question. Um, if such a thing exists, it has never been documented. Okay. And do people look the age that they should be from the survivors? That's a great question as well. You would have to interview them yourself. The Enclave has not had the time to, to investigate that further. Okay. There has not been any noteworthy reports from the crew as of now that you might find out. Okay. Right. Is there anything, I guess on that same note, is there anything that's different? They, they said there were, it was something was off about them, but it's like, it physically, do they seem just as normal as everyone else that's like a passenger or a human being? That's a great question. So I guess we can give a little more detail to that. Chedris would say that the islanders seem very healthy, like <clears throat> healthy and robust. They are large bodied people who are like tend to be very broad and muscular despite seeming to sit around all day. Um, her main off-putting thing about them was that they almost, they didn't seem relieved to be rescued. They were just like, Perfect. Take us aboard, please. Like, not even a mention of, like, no thanks were given, no desperation, no happy tears. Um, just seemed like another day okay. in some ways. Okay. Um, and she was off put by how cavalier they were about the whole thing. Hmm. Do we know, did we stumble upon the island or was there like a SOS, help, bonfire? It was just, hey, what the hell is that? Well, again, uh, to clarify, you guys aren't there yet. Like, you're oh. going to be, be pouring in, you're getting all oh, this information. Oh, okay. Okay. No problem. Okay. Talk, like, you know what you're saying. Um, there was no SOS. There was no signal. They were just cruising through the game from the coast looking at dragons. And then they saw this island. And she was like, that's not on the map. Okay. What is that doing there? All right. I'm and, walking through the telephone. And like, she has interacted with these people. Yes, she has. But we have not. We're, we're, we're seeing this entirely secondhand. You're at Enclave okay. HQ. Before we go through teleport, you're yeah. going to have a chance to briefly talk in character with the knowledge that you have from the missions. And, and they have the interacted, shaken hands. Do these people sweat, bleed, cry? <laughs> Actually, we're right. find that out. Yeah, you're, you're going to find out all the details on that. But from what she has seen, having interacted with them, her passengers have interacted a lot more. Yeah. Uh, they seem very friendly. They're very happy to shake hands. Uh, very happy to share food and narcotics, which they have a copious supply of. On the island or on the island? On the island. Huh? Uh, <laughs> Just uh, why they don't want to leave. The, the, the boat too, but it is a, a different variety. Um, and from what she can see, they are as human. Just robust and cavalier. <laughs> so interesting. So Gunslinger, I think we need to take a educated approach to this and discovery. Speaking of which, let's jump into assembly. You guys are in character, armed with the knowledge you have. Whenever okay. you're ready to proceed, let me know, and we will move on to the teleport. Let's, let's go for it. Yeah, I'm good. Oh, my friend. Yes. You can do your thing. Okay. 
Okay, I'll do my thing. I'll, I'll just be hanging back. You let me know when we're good to go, and we Sounds go good. for it. Sounds good. And you know, if we wrap this up by seven, we can uh, have some of those narcotics that are on the island. Bring some back to HQ. I don't know. As long as there's something in my mouth. I'm <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to walk through. Yeah. I'm, I'm... You guys proceed to the teleportation chamber, <clears throat> a dimly lit room with shiftingly colored walls and two gently glowing platforms on the ground. A faceless voice says from a wall, warriors, please take your stances atop the paths. And as you do so, you feel a strange sensation beginning at your toes, raising throughout your body, as though each fiber of your body was splitting into TV static. And when it hits your eyes, the world is an explosion of rainbow nestled within infinite darkness. But then it's gone, and there's beautiful sun-swept wind in your hair. I throw up immediately. <laughs> Teleporting, I throw up That is perfectly reasonable. <laughs> a I just take a deeper step, <laughs> and I'm like, like, that was good. I'm eating next to you. I'm just yeah. full I just, I just like, yeah. you'll be okay, bud. He's and leaving I'm going to hand water. Ship. As water is passed over to you, you feel another hand on your other shoulder. Taste that little bit of time getting used to the sea. I understand. I'm going to do a, a confused look to see what salt covered individual standing next to me. The man next to you is wearing an impeccably tailored violet suit and his face, he almost looks like he has like a, a permanent semi-stroke. His like face is kind of droopy. He's rather old and his uh, his partially balding hair is shaved into a half mohawk. He kind of blinks at you friendly like and says, I understand. Empty it out. We'll fill you up with some more afterwards. I'm definitely taken aback. Um, I kind of ask through through some burps and, and some yeah. more dry heaves. I kind of ask, who are you? Ah, oh, forgive me. He reaches out a hand. Halfsman Finkel. Can you repeat that again? The seagulls are really loud. Halfsman Finkel. All right, thank you. Thank you, sir. Of course, naturally. I don't recognize you from among our roster. Then you hear, that's because he's with me, Fink. A woman is marching over towards you. Uh, she's dressed in what look like military fatigues and has on like platform shoes that get for another five inches or so of height. Still does not reach either of your noses. Oh. And the minute I see her, I will I'll be. I throw my cigarette out of my mouth. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. She says, Ice and gestures to the the cigarette. A seagull swoops down, snatches it up and talk, brings it back to her fingers and she passes it back to you. Okay. I just take it back and I put it in my mouth and then I just lean back. I have a little notebook, I'm just going to scribble that. Yeah. She says, Chedris of the Emerald. Well, nice to meet you, Captain. You might. Mm -hmm. Chedris works, Captain works better. I hope that you can be of service to us. And she points out to the, towards the island. It is picture perfect, beautiful, looks like you could probably fire like a, a, a pistol and would travel the entirety of the island if you should oh. high angle. Very oh, small. Okay. Okay. It has like a, a perfect ice cream cone mountain in the middle of it that is very, very small. Like little staircases carving all through it. It looks like it would have been settled for a while to mm. have had that done to it. Mm. You see a number of like quite picturesque little houses that have been built out of palm fronds and carved. Does it even does it feel like a fake island? It kind like, of it's almost too picturesque. It kind of looks and you're sitting like, there like mm. this was it's a movie set. It's right. not truly it's a, true. The Truman, Truman Show. It's, yeah, I just thought of that. It, it looks like it could be. Okay. You'd have to pry further, of course. Uh, and you can see in the middle of it, uh, there's a, a big, like, seating circle. There's probably 50 people out there. Huge fire going, gigantic stakes. I'm not sure where those came from. Just kind of smoldering away. Uh, okay. There's fruit piled up in like teetering piles on the sides. The palm trees are swaying and there's dancing going on and there's people dressed in fine clothes clapping along the little like flower necklaces placed around their necks. And a number, the islanders are easy to pick out from the passengers from a distance. They are all, first of all, they're huge. They're easily bigger than you on average. Uh, and they all have like elaborate tattoos on them and they're mostly wearing you know, they're mostly like, like plant clothes. Yeah. You know I mean? This yeah. is just rock. The rock. The rock. Yes. <laughs> and we're sitting there like, yes, we're not going to take these guys. We're <laughs> um, The one exception being, you can see a couple of them are, are wearing what look like little bits of 
plastic or something on them, almost in, in like for belts or, or for caps or, or for like bras and things like that. So a couple of more like modern looking pieces on them. Uh, the ship, which you are again on the railing facing the island, has a gangplank down to the, the sandy, like a sandy shoal that reaches out. Uh, the trees are laden with fruit, but you can't see where on earth a stake would have come from. Uh, and as you, the captain, and Finkel look out towards the island, you can see like a, a little plume go up from the center bonfire and a couple of people cheer. Mm. Mm. First thing I ask the captain, I look at the captain and we, we mm. take this all in and I ask her, so is that just a one seagull thing or do you control all seagulls? Control. Do you Have you met a seagull? They don't really do the control thing. Well, then how did you coerce? Ask nicely. Ah. You're just following orders. Okay. And lots of French fries. Okay. Okay. Good to know. Good to know. I'm adding that to, adding that to my fun fact binder. Is that what they call the Islanders? God. <laughs> <laughs> Who's our point of contact for the Islanders? She says, that would be us again. She points towards the center. Uh, you see a barrel-chested man uh, who looks like he is holding a what looks like a stone, like a stone axe, maybe or, or like a big stone thing over his shoulder, effortlessly. Dude, I've done like two push-ups in the last four days. So if it comes to strength, you're my guy. All right, all right, cowboy. The only push-ups I need are this, <laughs> my finger, tree, and this. Finkel says from the side, "They're a Russian eye." Don't shy away from fisticuffs, they don't. He nods sagely. And I, I, which was Is that what happened to you? Oh, you mean, he looks towards his suit. Do I have a stuff or something? Yes, 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 yes. yes. Must have been one of the seagulls flying by. Cheddar says, not me. (laughs) Fink, can you man the helm for me? I think we might be getting another signal coming in. I'm trying to contact my base of operations to see if they can get me anything on these people. We have nothing so far. They feel like they appeared out of the blue. Hmm. Okay. She says, my best bet is some sort of dragon magic. You know, maybe they're casting a mirage or something. Maybe we pissed them off by accident. I knew I should have cut the rudder. Hmm. What was that? Hmm. I knew I should have cut the rudder. When we pass by certain areas, they do not like noise. So hmm. I try to, you know, Get in the ship a little bit, let's just drift on by. Maybe I messed up, and they're punishing us for it. Interesting. Now, when you say they, are we are we talking about sentience? Are we talking about communication? Oh, they're very sentient. Okay. The only reason they don't talk is because they don't want to. Mm. Once Listen, in- now, do you feel like you've done anything different than you normally do? I don't think I have. I've run this route at least two dozen times. Hmm. I might have something on now, if I may, there's a there's a book it's in my bag. It's the top ten facts of dragons. It's been a very long time since that's that 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 No. She says, make sure you have a Gandrathon edition. Our dragons are rather different from the norm. Well, they're aquatic, you know. Don't, not every day you see aquatic dragons. I've heard of aerial ones everywhere but here. Interesting. Interesting. Let me see if my edition is actually that. Now, do you know when it came out? She says. It's a very new line of study. Would have come out within the last year, maybe. Mm-hmm. You know, my, my, my mentor tries to keep me stuck, so let me just check and see if I have a top ten facts of dragons from the Gandrafon coast. While you are looking through your book bag, any actions that you'd like to take? <laughs> just throwing shit out of my bag right now. You see a chicken fly out? Mm. You got something. Yes. It's not perfect, but you have, uh, you know those, um, when you go to a bookstore, there's like the, the upcoming releases? Ah, oh, damn it, yeah. You find, you find like one of those handouts. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you can see that it, it is specifically uh, a, a, an analysis of the aquatic dragon fauna of the Gandalfon Coast. I have this pamphlet. That'll help us. <laughs> <laughs> she gives it a look and she says, the skull morphology is wrong on that species. Oh, God damn it. No, no, it'll be something. But maybe you could correct it for us. She takes it, takes a pen out from her pocket, and just like kind of scribbles in a couple of lines. That's more like it. Mm-hmm. She flips open a page and she says, there's some good things. It gives you some of the major overviews. And good, they refer to them by name. 
the number of people who come in and try to lump them into like they don't like that. Interesting. Individual okay. names. If you don't refer to them by that, they get very upset. Okay. Okay. Well, man, is yeah. there potentially tips that you could give us on the dragons? We can try to get in touch with one. I, I've been hesitant to reach out in case someone's angry. You know who might know about the dragons? Who might know about the dragons? Our point man, uh, Osigan. You're welcome to try to talk to him. He's been a bit of a brick wall for me. Mm. It, it, has there been anyone who was able to open up to him and get him to open up? Perhaps the passengers? They've been having a grand old time. Perhaps too much of a grand old time. I have a feeling I'll be facing a minor lynch mob if I don't give in. I think we can do this. Listen, one of my key mottos is be ambitious, do things, and then you just react to the things that were done. Oh, yeah. So React to the things that were just done. Just like my old pal you should say. Yo, Finkel gets it. Fink gets it, you know. Thank you. And then Thank you. smack Finkel on the back. Okay. You're a good man. I just gave him another. I thank you. <laughs> back to the helm, please. Thank okay. And then I'm gonna, I'm gonna take out my mat. Thank you, man. Jesus. Naturally. Kind of touches her hairpin and then, not clearly not sure of what to do for uh, with herself from here, marches along the deck towards the gangplank and past that towards the captain's quarters. Okay. Actions I just turned into the I'd I love to be that gangplank. Oh, <laughs> so let's finish the mission and then we can celebrate afterwards. The delivery. Look, eyes on the prize. I'm all for celebrating. And she's not the prize. I'm going to make sure I've done my job, obviously. Good. Don't worry. <laughs> I got your back. Um, you need to win. I mean, I want to head to the gangplank. Uh, I'm, I'm, I, I am. As you make your way over there, Wait, are you heading to the gangplank or I'm are heading to Austin? Austin awesome. awesome. awesome is. Down the gangplank onto the ice. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Okay. Right, let's go for it. As you reach the gangplank, you see a couple of passengers tipsily making their way up. Uh, you can see that their clothes are disheveled, they have flowers stuck in their hair, they have shell beads and necklaces all over them, and there is smoke gently coming out of their ears. Smoke coming out of their ears? Yes. I'm out of ears? Quick, the passengers. Hot, hot quick, instant, I'm just gonna have a good time down there? The first one says, oh my, you would not believe the flavors that they get here. It's just, she falls face forward onto the deck. The other one behind her says, she's correct. You need to try. Just get to the fire. You get the fire and then just bring it in and hold it in um, there. And then he kind of drags her. But we, I think we did a little too much. Gotta get back to the quarters. You know? <laughs> stick, to, stick to your cigarettes, we inhale after we get the information. My friend, there is a collective, like, one IQ point <laughs> between these people right now. I would deduce the same thing. Yeah, they're like candles. We need to go. <laughs> I'm gonna write a memo. Excellent. I'm gonna write a quick, hot memo. You said the captain went to her captain's quarters? Yes. I'm gonna write a memo to Captain Shedris. Yep. And inform her of these two passengers. Ten words or less, try to boil down your message into ten words. Okay. Um, please check Please check the two passengers. I would, lo- would like updates. Regularly? Regularly. There you go. There you go. On their, ah, crap, I can't do that. But yeah, all right. And since you know where she is, the memo vanishes from your hand. Right, sorry. And you feel it successfully delivered. Hells yeah. All right, uh, are you guys going to proceed down the gangplank onto the island? I am. Oh, I'm, I'm following my buddy 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. As you reach the sandy banks, uh, you get a slightly better view. Like, uh, while you did see quite a bit from the railing, it cut off, like the ship's architecture cut off part of the island. You can now see uh, past the mountain, there are a couple of beautiful coral stacks and a couple more like little buildings and houses built stone and coral, one of them even like a little pier leading off mm-hmm. over the water. Yep. Uh, there's a couple of small handmade boats on it that all are like, you know, dugout canoes. Very simple. Uh, you hear another cheer from the, the big circle of people enjoying themselves. Uh, and then a big gasp, but at this point uh, you can't really see because, you know, the story started with being blocked by the backs of people. Uh, yep. After the gasp, uh, there's another cheer, another big plume of smoke rises from the center bonfire. Actions that you'd like to take. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna hold my breath in the event that any of that travels downwind or anything like that. I I, I want to make it a point um, that I'm not inhaling that. Okay. This, this comes from my experience, but just give me one second. Absolutely. Um. So basically, I'm gonna pull up my duster, which protects me against some environmental effects. That is literally the perfect use for the item. 
Um, Look at you. That means you don't even need to hold your breath. Like the, like you said, yeah. you're kind of pulling up your coat like that. You can literally feel the sun beat down less hot on you. Man. Less hot on me. Oh yeah. I have glasses that'll amplify the sun into my eyes. <laughs> God. Okay, okay. Yeah, um... Do you want to proceed towards the story circle, or do you have another direction so you want to go? I do apply. I'd like you repeat the piece right before that moment that we decided, like, the, the smoke. Oh, yeah, looking uh, past the mountain towards the far side of the island, there's coral stacks coming out of the near ocean, there's a couple more buildings, and there's a little pier built out of the water with some dugout canoes. Okay. I, I would like to beeline it to, to the, the chief... The head point man. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd like yeah. to make my but, way to him in between bursts. But I'm gonna make a little. You know, you said that it felt a little hot, less hot. I'm like, man, it seems to have suddenly cooled off. No, that's your magical coat. I'm gonna snap him just like that. <laughs> no. As I'm holding my breath. <laughs> I'm just going to shrug and keep going. <laughs> yeah. Fortunately, Oskin is on the outside of the story circle. Okay. Uh, you can see that he's standing next to a similarly powerful looking woman who has what looks like almost like a like a, a net interlaced with shark teeth that's uh, slung over the slung over her back. Uh, so he's kind of on the outside. He has like a, a like five-year-old child on his shoulder. And he's just kind of looking in with a big goofy grin on his face with this huge stone slab thing. Like again, kind of looks like an axe slung across his back. As you approach, he kind of turns towards you. His legs are distinctly, he, now, his legs I, are strong, but are much smaller than the rest of his body. Can I do an action before we get too close? Of course you can. Um, I don't know what it would be, if it's arcane or if I can use my... Tell me what you're going for. Uh, I want to know, I think it's knowledge is power, but I would like to know if I can gather anything from the tattoos that are doing his body, ah. maybe the type of stonework that's... But can I gather anything? So okay, well, with the, the tattoos, if you want, you can use Fun Fact, which lets you state something as true based on knowledge that you could have possibly pre-existingly had. And if, again, it's a pitch, so I have to approve it, but if you weave it in nicely with what's been established, then I'm likely to take it. So if you want to conjecture something about those tattoos and yep. say that your character knew it in advance, that's fine. I will Follow also that. say this. Is there any other standout um, physical traits that this person has outside of the yeah. tattoos? Yeah, Oscar. So Oscar is completely bald, uh, but he has a huge beard. Uh, his beard almost reaches his belly button. Mm. Uh, it is intricately braided uh, and interlaced with what look like teeth and these beautiful, almost gemstones. It's uh, very, very pretty. It's uh, only other thing... Yeah, he's like a really well-adorned guy. Other thing of note about him, as you get a little bit closer and can start to see his back, his back has what looks like gemstones inlaid into it as the way they were tattoos. This man is glorious. All right, so I'm going to real quick, as we're approaching, I'm just going to kind of whisper to him, hey, just so you know, quick little fun fact, those tattoos actually correlate to a specific tribe, and it's their coming-of-age moniker if you will. I like it. I believe it has a correlation to the beard, but that's all I right know. That is accepted. No, do you know anything about fun fact the teeth and trans fun facts that are embraided within his beard or deposited in his back? I don't know. My my extent is simply the markings on his body. Um, Could come from two different some cultures. Some book, yeah. Some book I remember going through kind of talked about it. It's, it's what they use to kind of signify authority, age, manhoodness. Um, that's really it. The gems, hey, he might just have an eye for the, the flash. You know? Okay, so how far is he from us? At this point, he is within hailing distance. Like, you could yeah. yell out and say hello. And he hear you. All right, so I'm, can I walk up to him? Absolutely. So I'm literally going to, even though I've been following you the whole way, oh, yeah. I'm just going to get really... Just be like, oh, because they see how big he is. And yeah, oh, yeah. He looks like a dude, right? Yep, yep. So I'm going to walk up, I'm going to take off my hat with my off hand, bring it in and be like, hey, big guy, nice to meet you. He kind of, like you do with a phone, he like tucks his gigantic stone thing between his cheek and his shoulder and goes, a pleasure and a privilege, my good man. His it's, hand is so large, it engulfs your entire arm oh, up to your I wrist. It. And he, he shakes it gently. Go, That's know? a good handshake. Like, you're not, you seem to have won a few jewels yourself. He says, You would think that looking at me. I haven't fought in years, my friend. Not against anyone besides these knuckleheads. He gives the noogie to the woman next to him. 
who gives him a big kind of goofy smile in return. He says, but some of the youngins look like they're going to be trying their hand coming up soon. Mm -hmm. Now, may I ask? Of course you may ask. You may ask anything. Welcome to our island. I do not believe that I have made your acquaintances yet. My name is Osgood of the Lost Islanders. And we are now found. Isn't it great? It is great. We love it. Okay. And he says, any news on the on ship, by the way? I'm assuming passage will be brokered shortly. Well, yes, that's actually why we are here. Excellent. No wonder I hadn't seen you. You must be part of the crew. He says, well, again, my name is Ossigan of the Lost Islanders. We are now found. Well, Ossigan, I am Damien Shoebuckle, and this is a good associate and friend of mine, um, Hingle McCringleberry. He says, a pleasure to meet you, Masters McCringleberry and Shoebuckle. Welcome to the island. Now, my first question, and thank you for welcoming me, this island is gorgeous. My very first question, and I have to know, what's with the smoke? He says, oh, what a life's many pleasures, is it not? Sure, I would agree with that, but do you happen to know what it is? Is it an oh, herb? Actually, is it? we manufacture it from powdered silver coral. Hmm. He says, it's abundant out here, oh. haven't seen a anything like it until we were marooned and over the years you know you just got to turn over every rock and uh, burn every herb to see what happens and uh, we eventually found out that uh, the coral when you add it to the fire makes for just a wonderful time interesting interesting and how long have you been on this island i myself have been on this island for 13 years 10 months and six days so that would make you how old now he says not polite to ask a gentleman his age. <laughs> I'm 49. <laughs> and the young lad that is on your shoulder, I take it he was born on this gorgeous island? Oh yes, this is one of my boys. He's six years old. The boy says, hi! One of, and how many brothers and sisters do you have? I'm going to point towards the little kid. He smiles at you and says, I bet I could be in a wrestling match. If I win, will you tell me how many brothers and sisters you have? No. God damn. He has seven. Seven? Okay, okay. There's not much to do. I <laughs> I would agree. <laughs> I imagine a guy like you has a lot to do. And now is this fine lady to your right his mother? He looks over and kind of takes a moment to process and says, no. Okay, okay. Then she just kind of looks over and she says, no, no, I'm his Hers and her mother. Ah, okay. Quite a community here. Wow. Mm -hmm. so, um, so how many people were originally marooned here? Nineteen. Mm -hmm. And now how many people are you now? Uh, Twenty, thirty-two. How often do you do this bonfire with the smoke? With the, with oh. the <laughs> uh, Not so much anymore. Uh, I don't really get anything from it anymore. You know, oh, you know. It's been the years. <laughs> uh, the youth don't even get anything from it. He points to the six-year-old. He says, maybe they were born with it or something. Uh, but, so we haven't done it in a little while, but with guests coming in, you got to treat them. you got to show them the best. Oh, the exhibition's starting. <laughs> exhibition now. Okay. He points out to the bonfire, and you can see that there's two islanders out there, one a young man and one a young woman. They're kind of showboating to the crowd. Uh, and then they turn to each other and both kind of assume what looks like a wrestling stance. Mm -hmm. He smiles and says, you're in for a treat. And then he sits down a little bit to watch. The two lunge at each other and start tearing the hunks of flesh off of each other. Their grit is so strong, they can separate muscle from bone. And they gouge each other's eyes with such vicious vigor that the blood, the sand around them is spattered with blood. The audience does not seem to care and cheers. But then after about 30 seconds of viscera, the two stagger back from each other, turn to the audience, smile, and start to pick up the bits that were torn off and stick them back on. And they quickly reattach with seamlessly re-enmeshing re with, uh, with the meat that still remains. And the then, amount of damage they took was unreal during yeah. the fight, and they were yeah. still on their feet. And the just remember, just when they start doing that, I go. And when did that start happening? He says, "I uh, couldn't tell you. Been a while." 
<laughs> have you always been this absolutely shredded? Hmm? Have you ever been the size of a mountain? Or were you once my size? He looks at the mountain behind him. He says, uh, can't remember. What do you think? He looks to the woman next to him. She says, you've always been big to me. He says, thanks, honey. <laughs> he sniffs and says, I uh, can't remember. Okay, okay, and the food, do you find the food here very good? Probably a lot of like delicious. You want some? He gestures over uh, and beckons for a nearby girl to bring him some. He takes like a big kind of like half coconut with a couple of cooked shrimp inside of it and passes it over. I take it before it gets to him. <laughs> and I'm gonna look at you and I go, you do not hesitate if this turns me into anything. And I say, for science, and I eat a, eat a bite. It's delicious, unbelievably good. In fact, it's it's so good, it's very hard to not take another bite. Mm. In fact, you're going to take another bite. Mm. In fact, you're going to keep taking bites. <laughs> and you see him start to eat. And I'm going to I'm going to lean in and be like, Hey, buddy, I'm going to just take it. Smack! Them. I'm yeah. doing it. I'm going to smack the crap out of your hand. And then I'm just going to take my fist and literally put it across his face and be like, You're on a diet! That briefly snaps you out of it. You have like half a coconut left. You want to confiscate the coconut. I'm basically just taking away my my intention is to while during the smack, using my luck, I'm basically gonna just kind of like chuck it behind me because I just want to get it away from him. But and the luck pitch is to make sure he doesn't see it. The luck okay. pitch is ex mm -hmm. exactly. It's supposed to be like a sleight of hand, but in reality, I'm not trying to do it. Yeah. But that's my intent. Look, the universe is intent for me. I'm gonna call that a yes. Uh, during this thing, especially the smack, Austin again laughs uproariously. <laughs> Yeah, you have to understand. This man comes to me, states, I'm on a strict diet. Oh. Then he's over here eating all your shrimp. You can't. We're great cooks. <laughs> I, 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 I don't Am I back to my... You're, it's it's really kind cool. of hard to control yourself. But you have... Shh. Oh, angry child. <laughs> it's, it's hard to, like, control yourself, but you have more uh, control of your, of your senses than you did just now. Like, okay, so, like... You'd be a little bit, like... You know have I, mean? I made the cognitive connection that consuming that did something Easily. to me? Easy. Uh, I'm shoving my fingers down my throat. Okay. As he does so, uh, and you probably like double over and then delay him. Yeah, yeah, trying to. Oh, yeah. And as he's doing that, I'm going to, using my alert ability, mm -hmm. like I'm going to understand kind of what you're trying to do, and I'm just going to put my hand on his back and, like, and look back and be like, seasickness, man. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, you can make yourself throw up. You started the mission by throwing up. I don't think it's okay. Like <laughs> and you, Ralph, uh, a good chunk of not even fully chewed yep. food onto the ground. Yep. Uh, you have to do two or three goes before you're pretty confident there's nothing left in there and your head clears. And I'm gonna pat him on the back. Yeah. After you just threw up, and be like, okay, ow, it's done. Like you got it all out of here. Austin was laughs again. <laughs> Don't you worry. There's plenty more whenever your diet permits. Ah, thank you, thank you. The island's no place for diets. The island's a place to forget what tellers you to the rest of the world. Hmm. But we've forgotten that for a little too long. <laughs> <laughs> of course. The two exhibition fighters have returned to the story circle and are laughing on each other's shoulders. Your magical coat, does it protect, like... If that smoke comes out our faces, does it protect you? Oh, absolutely. Unequivocally. I can walk through a poison cloud. Mm. I just throw that thing up, and I'll walk through it like Jesus. The wonderful thing about this is that you could easily be bullshitting because you didn't even realize what was going on earlier. Yeah. And it's perfectly in character. Yeah. Carry on. <laughs> I want to go take a hit of that smoke. I feel you have my back. That's the spirit. You don't need to die it for a good time. My brother in Christ. <laughs> oh, you're a glutton. For, we're gonna call you glutton. No, because no. you're a glutton for punishment. To to find the proper scientific solution, one must be the experimentee. Do you know what curiosity killed? Not my cats. I still have seven of them. <laughs> Is that the thing where it's in a box? So why don't we test this uh, coat of yours? Wait, you want to get inside my coat? So does the memo start? <laughs> 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 Am I the only one that can control?
controller memo, or if I give him a page of memo, he cannot teleport it. He cannot teleport it. It has to be me. You that... have to be the one to teleport it. Okay. Okay. Anyone can write it as long as it's your special memos. Anyone can write on it. Okay. You have to be the one. To I want to give him two pages. Yep. So I now have set. You get to write ten, th ten words on each page, and all I need you to do is, no matter what, shove it into my hand, and it'll get to wherever you need it to go as long as you know the location of the person you're trying to write to. And make sure you mention that he should tell you what that is, because you need to. And you need to tell me what it is. So shove it in my hand. If, I, if, if, if whatever's about to happen happens, I want you to shove it in my hand and yell in my ear where it needs to go and who it needs to go to. For example, you want to write a memo to the captain. Captain's in the captain's quarters. You scream in my ear, captain, captain's quarters, captain's quarters, and shove the memo in my hand. So pause. <laughs> <laughs> because I need you to write down what's about to happen. I can't write my own experimental results. Brother, why don't... Can I lend my duster to him? You cannot... You can, he can wear it, but he won't get the magic. The magic is bound to you. Okay. It's a unique item. I mean, do you want me to just drag your ass to the captain? No. I think we need to stay here. Austin so says, right. that's the spirit! He gets it. Now, what if... You know what? Smack you on the back again. I'll believe in you. I'll do it. I'll give him my two pages. I have no idea what you're asking, but I'll do it. I have seven pages, and I just reiterate one more time. Write whatever on there, shove it in my hand, and scream in my ear where it needs to go. So I can write ten words on that. Ten words. Yep. If it's more than that, you will not tell for it. Can I do a haku? God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> as long as the person can understand what you're trying to say. Big, little, bad. <laughs> I think she'll get it. <laughs> I'll put winky face at the end. So I pretty much get nearer to the yeah. bonfire. You're and I wait the story for, circle? Yeah, and I wait I for the my next, desk up. I wait for the next plume of smoke. Absolutely. As you do so, there's a couple like no one stops you. Because even though like it's a circle, there's like some like a few performances for one of better terms, very loose, happening in the middle. No one stops you. Okay. You just kind of march right on through. And as you get closer, you start to get like a hit of the smell of the smoke. It smells like steel. It's, it's very metallic. Am I... I'm still coherent at this point. Yes, right? I'm still, okay. still completely coherent. You my little notebook, notebook, my little yeah. notebook, as I have in my hand. Can I? I'm trying to just write so, a quick hand, write quick Quick question. Quick question. Quick question. I know I have the dust rub. Do I still get the smell, or is it blocking the smell? Do you want to get a little closer and try? I like that question. Me, I would urge you not to. I, I want you to stay at a safe distance, because I'm the one who's the experimented on... And I'm saying this, right? So I see you walk a little bit closer and I'd be like... Oh, okay. So this is, this is in character. Yeah, in character. So I'll pause and be like, okay. And then I'm going to... I'm going to be watching him and like just kind of preparing a memo. one plus the sensory, right? Yes. That means your smell is better than this. You do get a tiny little whiff of it. Ooh, and okay. you actually can smell the steeliness to it. You know? Okay. It's... Okay. So it's a, it's a hint, but you can definitely smell. Like if someone burns like food that they're cooking in another room. You, you definitely get it. Okay. And my goal right now, as that hits me, that and as yep, as, as it's hitting me, my You're goal right now is us. as long as I am coherent enough yep. to write, I'm writing everything I'm going through. Well, the first thing you notice is that the world's colors start to become enhanced. Let's go. Colors and Saturation is being turned on. Okay. And then as you get a little closer, you see shapes in the fire. And in the smoke, beautiful, incredibly intricate Fibonacci spiral-like shapes. Shapes of moving creatures and crashing waves and billowing clouds. And I shed a tear just so we all. Yeah. I, I, there is a tear coming down my eye just so you know. You see that the shapes almost look like they merge into each other, or or one creature eats another creature. And now, how is he looking from my end? end? From your end, as he gets closer, his legs start to get a little loose. And as he gets a little closer, his hands start to go a little slack, and his head kind of tilts up a little bit. It's clear he's getting a big fucking head. I'm taking him. All right, so he's closer than anyone else in the story. So I'm, I'm at your, I'm at your, like, yeah. So I'm going to walk towards him and be like, as you move in, you do not feel what he is feeling. You just smell the smoke. But another thing that you notice, as your, your head is starting to spin, 
You're not looking at the fire anymore. You're looking at people around you. People around you also. It feels like they've been, become abstracted. Like okay. they're made of colors and shapes that they weren't made of before. And even the man who, you said you want to turn him around or something? You're kind of putting him I was going to kind of be like this man. You okay, buddy? And as he whips around towards you completely out of his mind, his color scheme is completely different as well. But it also, it has a different texture to everyone else. He's, if everyone else is made of these whooshy, kind of circly, spirally lines, he's made of sharp angles. And over his shoulder, Ossian, you can tell it's Ossian from his size. He's also made of these shapes with a brilliant, resplendent light shining from his stomach. I'm going to do a pitch. Yep. I'm trying to dig into my deepest willpower I have because the smallest idea popped into my head. I want to try and focus for as quickly and as, as intently as I can into grabbing my glasses. This is going to be a defiance, by the way. This is a, do you know what defiance is? It's tied to the will stat. Okay. And you do what's called a turning point, namely an in-character moment, like a character okay. moment of overcoming what is plaguing you. And in this case, it's this, it's this it's the smoke. narcotic. Yeah. yeah. I understand that I cannot break its will completely. Exactly. I just need enough to get the glasses Where are you gonna on. Dig? How are you going to dig to get the glasses on? Right, clear your head enough. Oh, for briefly touch it before you. So what? What can you do with the page? Oh, you can write whatever. whatever. Ten words. So you wanted me to just write a person's name and tell you to say. No, you don't need to. No, you don't write a name. I can clarify this. Yeah, it's yeah. like a status update of some kind. Yeah. That you can tell him where you want to go, who you want to go to, and where they are, and he can teleport it to them. So it's effectively like an instant communication to, for example, the captain. Or to the helms. So this could be something that if something really goes down yep. and you're not okay, yep. I can then use this later. I don't know. Bomb the use beach. This right now. Yeah. I don't no, 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 no. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. All right. It's so it's fine to clarify that out. So I understand the world is completely going through what it is going through in my mind. Yep. And I just know that on my body there's glasses. I feel I feel the numbness of my no, body. Can I, can I, I tell him he's like, looking he's looking for something? Yes. Yeah. So I'm, I'm trying what, what do you need? What do you need, buddy? You don't hear words. Instead you see hieroglyphics coming out. But in the hieroglyphics, you can see glasses. Primitive abstracted glasses, but you can see it's like a speech bubble that's coming from his mouth with glasses and question mark. So what I'm gonna do, so what I'm gonna do as you do that, I try and grab that and I do this. You, you can totally put that together. And I do that, I you try and grab your you glasses. glasses, buddy? I got you. I'm gonna reach into his bag, yep. and find his glasses, you got and then I'm gonna go plop them on his face. And with the last will before I completely succumb to this glory that is, yep. I want to commit my focus to Looking for Oscan? Oscan. Yep. And I want to try and commit whatever three words notation I would take as I stare at him. Yep. I'm going to whisper them in your ear. Oh. Okay. I'm trying to make sure I don't hear it. That would be <laughs> fine. Yeah. Normally, if we're doing this on like Discord or something, I just drop the call before you. Yeah. <laughs> or you just like go and chat to this. Yep. Like, mm. yeah. Now. Okay. Yep. At this point. As he has a glass on his face, he starts to keel forwards towards you, like his full body weight going into your face. Oh, I got you, buddy. <laughs> the world <laughs> is... <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. Yeah. Take the <laughs> trippiest 70s animation <laughs> you possibly can. And, uh, um, but, you feel amazing. Pitch. I have a pitch. Yeah, that's your pitch. Um, just from my time going around, going from place to place, being in situations, I have something the equivalent like smelling salts for as like a break me out of this shit. Oof. I don't think I can do that. Okay. Yeah, that was, that's a little too convenient. But uh, I can say that cruise ship, if they have seasick passengers on board, they might have something like that. Okay. Right. Now, you are carrying his body weight unless you want to let him fall. So what do you want to do? Oh, I carry, I, I catch him. Yeah. I don't think it's like catch him on it. I got you, buddy. I'm gonna legit just drag his ass slowly. Yeah. He is away giggling from the, the entire time. Oh yeah, I am. <laughs> As you do so, you hear. And I was like, buddy, you're pretty funny. <laughs> As he's giggling. All and that. he loves it. He's you. He spews some incoherent drivel in response. Yeah, yeah. He's much less coherent than the people who came up the game. Like 
and less <laughs> capable. Yo, I still gonna hit it. Yeah. Am I able to just drag oh, up the through the gangplank? Yes, you can. You can drag it up the gangplank. As you were leading the story circle, by the way, Ossigan laughs and says, "Take care of him. It's a big, big draft he took." He says, "In fact, I'm impressed you're not feeling it just as much." I'm just used to it, bud. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a man after my own heart and soul. Hey, don't get me excited. I'm gonna drag him. <laughs> you haul him back to the game like it's a much, much harder trip back, especially with oh, that. Oh, hundred yeah. percent. But yes. as you hundred pull out the game plank, uh, you hear you know, running along the deck of the ship as Captain Chedra skids into sight. She says, "Already." She takes one of his like armpits so that the two of you can haul him together. Okay. She says. Captain's quarters, I think. <sighs> the two of you haul him back into her quarters. Very nice. It's a luxury liner, and the captain's quarters are in no exception. And she says, Right. Um, what do you think he needs? You got anything that can break a... Let me know the second I start to kind of come yeah. back just a little bit. Right now? Look. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just look. let me know. Yeah, let me know. He's high as a kite. If you got something that... You're a right. hangover? Or bring him back down from the clouds. High as a kite, low need. as an anchor, as we say on the sea. Let me see if I can find some ginger root. Mm, I don't know about that. It's you gotta shove the whole thing in his face. <laughs> and start squawking like a seagull. Yep. <laughs> or get some french fries. She says, cute, maybe. <laughs> it could do good for him to eat something. Is there anything, so in this area, is there any like random food or little thing that's around? Yeah, there is. So, it, you like, can see like, a, you can see like, a, you know those individually wrapped like chocolate truffles? Imagine one of those, but not chocolate, instead some unidentifiable sweet. Okay. I'm going to grab one of them, yeah. even though she, I didn't ask her anything. I'm like, here, bud, I know you got the munchies. And I'm <laughs> trying to unwrap it and feed it to him. He certainly does. <laughs> <laughs> Immediately. And his mouth kind of goes like, and like looking for more. He's like a toddler. It's not horrible. <laughs> Starving, man. Yeah, yeah, I had a kid. <laughs> I want him to be like him. Chedris comes back into the room with like an arm full of little bottles and tinctures and she yeah. plunks them down onto her desk and starts to like grab one, no, no, and then grab another, maybe. She pops it and it smells like a nail polish remover or something. Oh, Christ. I'm oh. trusting you with it. Hey, you need to put this inside his nose. Okay, I'll, I'll hold the big guy. Hey, bud, come here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna basically reverse koala him. I'm gonna just sit down, kind of like bring his, his face back like this, just so <coughs> you can get it right in there. She says, "Be careful with this. This is one of our few cures on the ship for dragon madness, and it's not fun." The bottle goes up, and your beautiful reverie is shattered into a million pieces by a clawing terror that gouges its way out of your subconscious. Man, I and yes, exactly. <laughs> I am. I'm gonna try to hold him back. Uh, uh, the Dragon Madness tincture bottle gets smashed out of her hand and goes flying across the room. I don't know this. Uh, I'm high as a kite. And uh, she gives like a yelp, but it has to like kind of choose for a moment and then decides to commit to here. And pins him. Could I potentially give a pitch? On the bottle. Give me or something. Wild. Give me something wild. Here. Okay. So <laughs> I see he's going wild with that. So I'm going. I can, to... I can give you a few things with an arm's reach. Right? Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Desk, chairs with cushions on them, a uh, little hammock nearby. All these are within like a reach. If you want to try to do something. Basically, I'm gonna go to reach for the vial. Definitely not gonna get right. Right. A hundred percent. So I'm gonna reach for the vial as a normal human being. Yeah. But what happens is, as I'm trying to reach, he falls over. He hits the table, causing it to just fly upwards, which makes me try to avoid it and push it aside. And in the meantime, just I go to grab onto something because I'm falling now, and I'm gonna basically end up throwing the cushion, and it's basically gonna hit against the table and fall on the floor right as the vial's about to hit, and it lands perfectly in the center, undamaged. Okay, allow me to briefly simplify this to, he knocks you over. In the pandemonium, you, like, I think that the cushion plan might have come to you. Like, right, right. You can try to go for the cushion. In the process, 
bashing the desk, like desk is down. From the I would say interpret it as I accidentally threw the cushion. Yeah. yeah. I think <laughs> you, you, you were trying to throw the cushion, it was not going to be. After good. the fact, I'm going to go, you're welcome. There you go. Like it was supposed to happen. Now, I will say, uh, you have a goose egg on the back of your head from where you slammed into the desk. <laughs> the desk is everywhere. All of her bottles and tinctures are all over the floor. A few smash. But, vile safe. Yes. It landed on the cushion, a little bit spilled, nothing worse than that. And then I'm just going to tilt my half for it. You're welcome, man. Chedris, who is pinning him bodily yeah, against the I, chair, yeah. says, I can't believe it. You're amazing. Oh. I don't know. She looks over her shoulder and <laughs> gives like a little shiver, and then gets almost slapped in the face by him. <laughs> so she's like, <laughs> reaffirms, and then... Finally, the world is coming back into view. You are gasping for air, you're clammy like you have a fever, but you finally have some control of your senses. Again, you are gasping for air, what do you want to do? Three words. It's the words that I tried to commit to memory as I was high as a kite. And what are they? <laughs> Beautiful white pearl. That's all I keep saying. Are oh, you just like the eyes glazed over? Yeah, dude, 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 that, I focused yeah. all of my concentration on remembering those three words. Exactly right. Yeah. So when I came to, I just started saying. As he is sputtering, okay. Chandra says, "Grab the vial! Grab the vial! Grab the vial! Grab the vial!" You go! You saved it! Go get it! Oh, okay. I'm gonna grab the vial and okay. like shake, really hold it steady and shake it. Like, Buddy, calm down. And then I'm gonna go close and try to like do a little awful. Bits. It feels like fire ants are stinging the inside of your nose. You are, it feels like you're bleeding out of your eyes. He's just crying. Uh, and it feels like your hair is falling out. He's just sweating. But calm. <sighs> a sudden rush of air. You feel like you just ran a mile. Keep that shit away from me. I never want to smell that again. Chedris, who is like pretty much pinning you against the chair. Oh, am I still raging? Am I still so raging right now? No, no, no. You're, oh, okay. you're finally calm, but she's okay. just like still like in yeah. place. Her hair is like all in her face. She says, "Are you back?" Yeah. She gives you a little. It says, "Good yeah, job, sailor." Still hurt. That still hurt. She <laughs> staggers backwards <laughs> and falls into a chair. <sighs> what? What are you saying? Just White, beautiful white pearl. Pearl. Where? The chief. The 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 tattooed guy. Yeah. The man with the massive weapon. Yeah. Awesome. Him. Yes. What I, I, I I took a big inhale. Everything was gorgeous and colors and and colors and no colors and shapes. Uh, the glasses. He threw my glasses on. Do I still have them on? Like, am I? Am I... Oh no, they're <laughs> they are they, 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 they are they are on the beach. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. So okay. so uh, I looked at him through my glasses. Yes. yes and yes. Uh, and uh, it was it was beautiful. It was it was white and pearl. Yes. Yes. He's, he's very beautiful. Right? That. But no, there was a glow. That's the last thing I remember. It was a white glow. You were a rectangle. And everyone else was squiggly lines. You were a rectangle. I think it was that, uh, yeah. There were pretty shapes. But you, you were like But a back to the pearl. Where was it? Him! The what chief! Mean, him? Wait a second. I, was I like, looked at the chief! Wait, I was like a rectangle. What about the other people on fire? Squiggly lines. Shapes. All over the place. Yeah. And then the chief was a pearl. I don't remember. I just remember seeing him and it was White. It comes back to you. Uh, yeah. It was about, you could place how big it was now. Maybe big enough to hold it in your hands. And it was right in his stomach. Do you have any knowledge of uh, ancient beasts or, or mythology that talks about something like that? Well, I might. We did get an edited pamphlet for the dragons around here. You are so smart. She goes scrambling out and... Paul goes to her like discarded desk and rifles through the upside down drawers and says, "There it is." She takes out the pamphlet that you procured. She says, "I've been reading through," and she pulls open a page. You can see there is a gorgeous dragon on it. These these dragons are really like they're almost like Amazonian frogs in mm. their color schemes. Mm. And this one has this huge ridged spine. Uh, and it's all kind of sandy golden in color with these like green trailing hairs coming, or like maybe maybe 
antennae or feathers coming off of its head. Uh, and you can see that it's long and sinuous with big, like, compound eyes. And nestled under its jaw, you see a little white pearl. And the sight of it, like, brings it all back into your head. It looks the same. So what, what does that creature do? Like, what do we know about it? Oh, um, this is uh, Tandralanis. She points to the name. I have never met her before. Um, she was one of the first contact points between humans and dragons when my father first began to navigate the Gandalfron archipelago. Uh, this would have been before I was born, 30 years ago, maybe. I think you need to have a word with uh, Osigan. And I think you need to bring your uh, peace with you when you do that. When we do that. Oh, was that my peace on me? Why would you say so? Because I haven't decided in my head if he himself is one of these or he took out and consumed eight the pearl. Hey, I'm just working off a theory from coming down so from the highest So we don't know anything about this tendril on this thing. I've only heard, my father knew her, but I've never met her before. Is there any way we can get in contact with your father to learn something? Unfortunately, he has been deceased for a few years. Did he have any close research assistants, any close friends that might have witnessed this, you? I was his only confidant. Okay. Does assistant. he have any, like, papers he left behind, notes that he had, or... I can try to look. A journal. I can try to look. Let me... Can I speak to Fink? Yes, of course. He's at the helm, uh, far side of the ship. Can't miss it. I will go through my father's nose. If you can, if this is true, I am never, ever letting that man on my ship. Running theory. Let's not commit it to, to law. This is just a running theory. That is barbaric. Running theory. Not Very well. Please, please determine whether this is true or not. Please. So is the, the, the memory of the tendril on us from her father is negative? You don't know that. Like, I don't know. Yeah, all all that know. she says is that she never knew the dragon her father did. She was the first point of contact. Tendril was the first point and, of contact. But she would never allow him on the ship because of that fact. If, if Ossigan ate, ate a dragon... That was one of my theories. That, right? Yeah. If, if, if Ossigan ate a dragon, she's never left. Or he is. Or he it. Or that's it my is. thought. That's yeah. my two friends. She, they talked about the mirages with the dragon before, so yeah. therefore, it could just be a mirage from that dragon. Yeah, that is very that possible. We're, that the island is actually just a mirage from the dragon that we're dealing with. Are you guys going to... Is this not a conversation you're having in character? Right? Yes. Okay. Sure. Cool. Yes. Just wanted to make sure. Yeah. Um, make it... So do you think the islanders... Don't down my thing a little bit to like lay person, but like... Do you, think, do you think the islanders are themselves... I want to talk to Fink. I feel I'm like going to be honest. More. Do you have you ever seen anything like those islanders in your life? No. The closest thing that I saw was the markings on. And there's been no shipwreck or other mention of this place on a map. And the one person who has a connection to this thing is the daughter of the man who had the connection. Well, had the connection to the dragon whose pearl right. is very similar to. But maybe Austin. this dragon. Maybe it's the dragon who's creating the mirage specifically because this is the person that's inside. Hello! Yep, my boy. Finkel opens the door. He's like, yeah. Hi, hi there. Uh, a little seagull told me that you wanted to talk. Really quick, Fink, if I can call you Fink. Oh, of course you can call you Fink. Um, I just kind of want to know a little bit more about you. Um, oh, of course, of course. So, are you a first mate? Are you, what brings you to this cruise ship? I'm a helmsman. I worked. First, with the captain's father, mm. and I've been a part of the cruise, uh, of our cruise here, for the last night. Since it started, 26 years ago. Okay, okay. 26 years oh, ago? Oh, yes. He okay. says, and I've, um, I'll, I'll be perfectly honest with you, I was not a very good homesman at first. But, I've had many years to learn. And I'm very competent at my job now, if I can say so much. I love that. And you know what the best part about this is? Oh, yeah. This has nothing to do with your job. Oh, very good. I was very glad. Good. You I gotta like the story of perseverance. Oh, of I was a little nervous. <laughs> no, 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 not at all. <laughs> now, um, dragons. Yes, I love them. They're beautiful creatures. Now, if I were to say some dragon names, would you potentially be able to... Oh, of course, of course, of course. Easily. Uh, 
Tangerlanis. I remember her. I remember her. Yeah. Remember her? Oh, yes. She was very kind. Uh, first, she was, I think, the first dragon, the captain, uh, former captain, captain, not this captain, mm-hmm. captain, ever spoke with. Uh, he did, we, did, we didn't know that they could even talk before Tangerlanis came about. Um, what is she? Beautiful color. Was uh, she in her dragon form? Oh, yes. I, I don't think I've ever seen one not be in a dragon form. I've heard that they can, but I've never seen it. Okay. And um, very long. She was probably uh, four ship lengths, probably on boats. Okay. Uh, maybe a little more. That's fucking huge if it wasn't good. Yeah, <laughs> four, yeah. 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 Uh, and he says, let's say, um, strong tide with her. Strong tide. Strong. That's what they call it, you know. The dragons, they have very great control over the sea. Huh? And they say, the ones who have the deepest connection with the ocean, the tide is stronger than them. A strong tide, they just call it. And so her, her tide <laughs> can't get stronger. Interesting. Uh, well, maybe you can. So what is she? John Raffigan might have been stronger than her, actually. Uh, but it mincing words. Wait, who's that? Don Raffigan. He, he was uh, probably the largest I've, I've seen. Uh, he gave me... Oh, look at this. He reaches into his little half mohawk and he pulls out a beautiful little scale. It's tiny. It's almost like the size of a, a pencil eraser. And it's beautiful black. He says, he gave me this. Eyebrow scale. Very valuable. Probably more valuable than every property I've ever owned. So what did Tendralanus look like? Uh, uh, long, uh, sinuous, snaky, uh, 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 large osteoderms on the side of the head, and the parietal lobe was oversized. Um, I'd say that her rostrum was probably uh, three yards, I guess, and um, the, uh, the nasal cavity was uh, protuberant. Now you are a man of what about, what about color? Uh, yellow. Yellow. Okay. That's something I can remember. This actually checks out with, uh, with the image that you saw in that panel. Okay, they uh, they okay, seem to have got the, the picture quite correct. Okay. Uh, and you're not sure whether he is he actually knows the terms or that he's just heard them used yeah. so often that yeah. he's remembering. Um. So like so like the pearl that Tendralanus had like oh yeah over here yeah she had a tidal pearl she had. that's quite powerful okay mm-hmm. yeah tidal pearls only uh dragons above. 365 years, I think, start to grow them. And um, they, they house uh, tide, you know, tide power. Mm. You know, it's a, it's, how did the captain, captain, not this captain, captain, that captain, captain, describe it to me. He said something like, um, the magic of the ocean is so strong in some dragons that if they kept it in their body, it would tear them apart. So they put it in this little me. It's beautiful, isn't it? I have a, can't see it because I have a shave. I have a tattoo of one. Hmm. Um, a question for you. Why did you say tide magic? Tide power? Yes. Theoretically, yeah. if you're following, if something were to happen to one of these pearls, do you think the tides would potentially lessen? Maybe the sea level lower? Maybe it show some things that were hidden beneath the waves? Yes, I mean, I've seen them do it. I've seen one of, I've seen, wasn't her, it was another one. She opened the ocean like a funnel. And we came right up to the edge. And the water didn't pull us in. We could see right down to the base of the ocean. All the beautiful corals. And the, the fishes were parted to the sides, but you could see the crabs down at the bottom. And the seagrass is lit. Mm. I've never seen anything so beautiful in my life. Mm. And they can do they can do things like, I've seen one bring up the ocean high, make it like 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 a great building of mm. water rising up and out, and the fish could swim up inside it. It was but they only do that if they trust you. Not for these tours, they don't want to show off. No, they just like getting us high. Yeah. What What are the implications if someone were to get them, their hands on a pearl? Could they extract the pearl from the dragon? That would be killing the dragon. Mm. But don't you do that, sir. That's never killed. Oh, I would not. Now, have you ever heard of a dragon looking like a human? And no. kind of what form that I've heard dragon? of them taking bird forms before. Bird um, forms. And, uh, oh, they take... Mineral farms, I've seen them take on the form of coral before, and maybe a tree, maybe. I think maybe right. even a whole island once in a while if they're really playing with you, but this one definitely isn't. I've seen dragon islands before, no way. Mm. Not a chance. Mm. How... Mm. Okay, I'm gonna just continue, yeah. You hear a... 
on the door. Captain! Hello! Captain! Does Fink jump at it? If not, I'll go to the door. Fink kind of turns around and says, that would be some passengers, probably quite antsy. <laughs> Pardon me, gentlemen. He marches over, opens the door, and then a uh, passenger sticks a face in, clearly still a little high, and says, this is unacceptable. You mean to tell me that Captain Chedris needs more time to decide whether to save these poor people? I'm going to walk up to this person, oh, yes. like chest out, and be like, you're unacceptable, and you need to back up. She says, I will have you know that I am a sanctioned review critic for travel cruise lines, and if we do not pick up those people, you are bombing. Now, question. Do you also review food? Yes, actually. I'm a food critic as well. Yes, actually. Interesting. Have you tried some of the local cuisine? I have. It's not bad. It's a little scorched, but the ingredients are unparalleled. But don't distract me. You... Captain, I know you can hear me. You make sure. You hear another voice behind her says, Yes, you make sure. And you hear a couple other loose voices behind that as well. Can I ask you a review on the food? I'm not trying to distract you at um, all. But I did just have some. Yeah, I would give it a three out of five stars if I'm judging it by professional standards, but not really fair to judge professional standards to a group of hapless people abandoned on an island. Captain! Captain! Where, did you find yourself being able to stop eating the food? Um. An odd question. Mm. Um, well, of course. I'm not a pig, you know. Wait a second. <clears throat> you said it was a three out of five. Yeah. Why did you want to eat it so badly? Well, because the ingredients were very good. I want to respect what these people can provide for me, even if it is not restaurant quality. She tries to push open the door more. I'm going to rip out a memo page. Yep. And I'm going I'm to go to this person. And I'm going I'm <clears> to <throat> get in my most librarian posture and I'm going to say, listen, this page, I understand you really want the captain. She's currently busy right now, tending to some of these sick and ill passengers. I want you to take this page and I want you to write your most strongly worded letter to the captain. Take your time and get it clear as you can. And when you do, cut words or less. <laughs> no, 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 no. And when you do, I cut them off first at the 10 words. Yeah. And when you do, I want you to find me. Okay, and when you find me, we're going to get this to the captain. And I need a response immediately at that time. Of course. I can Understood? You that. Yes. Very good. You hear that? Some of the other passengers who are behind her, looking disgruntled, say, mm, very well, very well. Another one says, but haven't you seen the children? We can't just leave them. Another one says, yes, no, we can't leave them whatsoever. We can't leave them all. Do you think that we could rent out that back space in our house, dear? As they go trundling away. The food critic also leaves already scribbling furiously on the memo in tiny, tiny font. Yes, that'll, that'll keep him. Yep. Fink says, Oh dear, bad review. Oh, uh, oh. Fink, there is no worry to it. That is actually a special lettered Let's letter. Let's slap him on the back. All right, buddy, don't worry. Yeah, Fink's about that. We've yeah. got this covered. Uh, uh, as, as long as we don't get a bad review, that would be very bad. No, don't worry. Man. I don't foresee a word where we get a bad review. Right. Chedra sticks her head up from what it turns out is a secret compartment behind a bookshelf. She says, are they gone? Yes, ma'am. Yes, They're they are. Going. They're going to be writing a strongly worded letter for you to read. Oh, thank everything. She retreats back into the bookshelf and she says, I'm working fast. Please try to figure out what's going on. All right. I would like to go back and talk to Austin. Uh, I, could, gonna, I could just shoot the critic. <laughs> like I said, sometimes you do a little more of these, and everything goes away. We're not gonna do that. I'm the last just time play you with you, buddy, <laughs> and then we get Chedris. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Chedris is like peeking out from behind the bookshelf, and she gives us like a little with her finger before retreating. So I, I take that as fifteen minutes, and then I can do it. <laughs> I don't know where I don't walk away. I just say that to him very quietly. You hear, please do But of course, the door shuts before you get the rest of the sentence. Have I realized I don't have my glasses? Right? Yes. Yeah, I was looking for them, right? Yeah. yeah. So I realized I don't have my glasses. Got it. Um, but we, you mean the glasses? We could just retrace our steps to the, to the walls. You can retrace I can retrace them. <laughs> I can try to see if they're at the fire still. 
Okay, sounds good. Yeah, sounds good. good. I'm just going to walk it back, see if have my duster up, see if the glasses yep. are there. Uh, fortunately, they're at the very bottom of the game plan. Didn't have to go far at all. Awesome. So I'm broken, broken. not broken. Not I'm going to pick them up, do a little, and then I go, here you go, bud. <laughs> Thanks, man. I'm going to fold them up, slide them right. No problem. <laughs> yeah, he does. <laughs> Let's see. Um, is Ossigan there? Uh, Ossigan is still outside of the story circle. Uh, you can see that there is another gory exhibition currently taking place. Mm. Uh, this exhibition, you see, involves a passenger. <gasps> Have they started? Yes. They are midway through, in fact. So this passenger is Okay, so I'm just watching. They are yeah. torn to pieces. Okay. But as you get closer, they start to put themselves back together. The performance is over. Are they high as a kite? Very. <laughs> Ossigan turns as you get a little closer. He gestures and says, What fun, eh? <laughs> you should get involved. It's a great time. Mm, mm. I have a few questions, though, about the great time. Oh, uh, well, uh, questions about the family or nope. um, about our accommodations on the ship? Nope. Actually, as a matter of fact, questions about ripping each other's body parts and putting them together. He says, well, funny thing to ask a question of that, but um, I don't see why not. Here, uh, do mind. He says, I don't want to spoil the <clears throat> time for everyone, and you seem like you have um, purposeful questions mm. in mind. He says, right this way, gentlemen. And where's he leading us to? He's pointing towards the mountain with the stairs carved into it. I shoot you a look like a be ready, and I'm going to... I'm just going to do a little one of these, and basically I just have, I do, I can quickly draw based upon my, mm, my abilities. Yep, so I'm just going to be alert during this whole time, and just ready for a quick draw if I need to. Yep. Ossigan starts to belaboredly climb up the staircase three steps at a time. Of course. There's... You guys, it's not, like, it's a long staircase, yeah. but it's not a very long, like, you can get up to the top in five minutes, you know? Okay, okay. He doesn't talk to you, nor look back as he climbs up. And when you get to the top, there is a perfectly leveled cap to the mountain uh, with a couple of big stone seats carving into it. Now that you're looking at it and the way that his hands are shaped, they might have carved the stone by hand. Mm. He sits on one of the big stone seats <sighs> and gestures to you two to do likewise. Okay. He still has the big axe across his back. How, how far away from it are the other stone seats? Uh, the stone seats are maybe... Two of this room length away from each other. Are so they like, like in a circle? Or are they facing each other? Roughly a circle facing each other. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do the same thing. I will, I will do mm. the same. He says, ask away! So, what allows someone to come back from such a gruesome bout? Truth be told, I could not tell you. My guess is the island. It's a strange place. Mm. Lots of magic here. Mm. Might be the food. Might be the silver coral. Could be all manner of things, but I like to think it's a cheery disposition that does the trick. Now, if I said a name, could you tell me if it rings a bell for you? Of course I can. Probably not going to be one I remember. Mm. I haven't uh, associated with many names besides my immediate circle in quite some time. <laughs> yeah, uh, Don Raffi. No, no. Sounds, um, sounds fancy, doesn't it? <laughs> Far too fancy for a humble man such as myself to associate. Humble man? Yeah. He says, oh yes, we came from very little before we were marooned. And the gems that adorn you? Those we acquired here. The island has many secrets. Interesting, interesting. And you place them on your body yourself? Oh yes. He leans over to show you the beautiful gems and lay into his body. Now that you're looking at them, though, you recognize something. Oh. They have a familiar glitter to them, as well as a familiar shape and texture. Your sensory, plus sensory, lets you pick it out. You're not entirely sure what they remind you of, but it's something definitely familiar. Is the visual aspect of it what reminds me? Yes. And you didn't recognize him as being familiar the first time you saw him. So do I see him kind of like see that? Yeah, like you, you see him being like, Ooh, what, like something's going on. I'm gonna throw my book at you and say, write it down. Just, out, out, out. Do you want to catch the book? Oh, I'm intently thinking, but basically, 
the book ends up smacking me in the face going right in my lap. Perfect. Easy luck. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, I noticed uh, on your body, no pearls? He says, no, pearls are not common here. You don't, you'd need a, a large uh, shellfish to produce such a thing. And we've eaten all the shellfish in a 20 mile radius. <laughs> so I'm, I'm sure they'll be back. I'm gonna do one of the, I'm gonna like write down what I'm, what I'm like, this looks familiar. And I'm just gonna throw it back on the like, right at, back at you, bud. I am deep in thought and trying to figure out. And yeah. I'm gonna, that's that just dead me. Yeah, <laughs> or yeah, do whatever. Um, they can duck you. Well, I'm not aware that too. <laughs> yeah. Awesome last. I, I, ah, I, I use my accuracy just to eat it, eat it okay. in your face. Biff. So, Austin, awesome. I, I have a question. Maybe you can, as someone who has partaken in the delicious smoke, maybe you can help translate what I experienced. Oh, of course. So, out of character. Yeah. Um, so, the, the color of the gems. I feel like it's familiar. Not the color. The color is new. They're beautiful, and there's a, a few different colors. Uh, but the, the quality of the, the glint off them, the shape of them, the texture and the sparkle of them, all these is very familiar. In fact, now that you've had a few moments to ruminate, you saw it just now in the captain's quarters. And Finkel showed you his scale. Oh, they're not the same color, not here, the same but color. it reminds me of the scale of oh, Don yeah. Rath again, or whatever. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Okay, mm. so I'm gonna do a very. I'm gonna interrupt and just pause it. I'm gonna go. Mm. So, did you grow those gems, or? Oh no, I put them there. Where did you get them? The island has many treasures. I mean, he says, we've I've carved stone and dug up sand, turned over everything that was here, and found all sorts of wonders. So, like, you just place them, they just stay there? Or? He says, truth be told, I never really thought about it. <laughs> Maybe it happened early on, before the island's magic made us put back together the way I mean, do. do you mind if I like, oh, try to pull one out and put it back? Be my guest. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> I'm going to over to you and turns his I'm going to walk over and go try to like see if I can pull it off and put it back in. Pops it out. But there's like a, an inlay in his body that matches it perfectly. It's beautiful. It's undeniably a dragon scale now that you've seen one. Okay. Mm. Am I able to just put it back yeah, on? Yeah, you can put it right back in. So and he found these, right? He said he found these. Yep, he said he found them. And again, you've, you've seen similar scales on other members of the Islanders, but he has by far and away the most there in his beard and his back. And I'm sitting on one of the chairs, right? Yep. So as they're talking, I just kind of want to feel, it's stone I'm feeling, right? It's definitely stone. It's stone. Okay. And does it look like it was placed here? Literally, or yeah, was it the like mountain that was carved? Carved into a seat. As well as like the place in between. Okay. Are you the craftsman that did all of this that we see? Not here? by myself, but I spearheaded the operations. Gentlemen, are there many more questions? I really must be returning. Two to more. You. Very well. Two simple, easy ones. How did you get on this island? Is a good question. We were on a ship, a small ship. I made it myself. We were fleeing something very awful that I do not wish to get into detail about. A great storm kicked up. We were thrown from the ship. We clung to each other desperately. The water, it was as though it wanted us to be safe. And we came ashore. Mm. And we've been here ever since. At first we tried looking for help, but after a year or two, we gave up. My second question. Yes, what is your second question? I witnessed something while I was enjoying the labors of your bonfire. Oh, yes, it, it reveals many wonderful things. It did, it did, yes. it did. Um, I saw something within you. Oh, very good. You were probably witnessing my joyous inner spirit. I am free of many worldly trappings here, as are we all. In some ways, I am 
somewhat dreading returning to the real world. <laughs> yeah, it was a white pearl, and it was magnificent. Nothing rings a bell for you. My inner joy must be quite um, resplendent then. Mm. 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 Well, I guess, you know, you got to get back to your people. Do you mind yes. if we stay up here and enjoy the island a little um, bit? Why don't you? Okay. All right. Why don't you? Well, thank you. Thank you. Tally-ho, friends. Um, don't stay up here too long. The ship might pull out without you. <laughs> Very well. He goes stepping down the stairs. Uh, can I catalog where we are? Yeah. Yeah, I want, I want to catalog. Stones and dust come flying into the air, as well as a number of other discarded items, bird shit, etc. Uh, in addition to these things, the dust is swirling up predominantly from the center of the, the like, mountaintop thing that you're on. In the middle of where this dust is swirling up from, it starts to, to kind of reveal a divot that is full of dust and more comes out of this divot until it's a completely clear, empty keyhole. Hmm. How big is this keyhole? Big. Like, yay large? Like, does my brain put it together that it could potentially be the thing that he carries around with him? Absolutely. You come to that conjecture instantaneously. And he still has it on him. He always carries it. You've never once seen him put it down. You hear him still huffing and puffing his way down the mountain below. Every footfall shudders. Do you have any ability that can like manufacture craft or something like that? I don't know if you do. No, but I think we can get his weapon off of him. You guys hear down below a cheer from the people around the bonfire, but then the waves are getting awfully loud. Uh, I pissed them off. Mm. They're getting louder too. I, I, I think we need to... So any reason why you didn't I'm going to send him along to the captain right now. You think, yep. you think there was any need to bring up Tendralon? It's just like... Oh, he didn't say Tendralon. I didn't say Tendralon. I said the other he guy. He said a different guy. I right. said the other guy. Did you want to bring up Tendralon? So you wanted to avoid it. I wanted to, but... He was pressing for time. And I had I wanted to get those two questions out. While he's asking me these, I have my yeah. memo paper out. Yep. I'm sending a memo to the captain. What's going to say? Captain quarters. Pull the gangplank. Yep. Back. Um, pull the gangplank. Gangplank. Gangplank is one word. All right. Pull the gangplank back. Inform guests. It's because of time. Perfect. Um, and send. Send. <laughs> Successful teleport. Okay. Um, I want to work my way down. Now, as you go to work your way down, yeah. big, big, big problem. On one half of the island, the island, half of the guests, everything is normal. On your half of the island, the water has risen to the height of the mountain and is beginning to engulf the mountain, cutting off any hope of escape unless you wish to go into it. The water is literally a sheer wall that just kind of neatly cuts off the mount from the rest of the island, leaving the rest completely untouched. And you don't see any movement from the guests down below indicating that they have noticed or that they care. What do you feel in text? I can shoot a hole through anything. I'm gonna take out my... <laughs> oh, no, 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 I'm gonna stop him. I'm gonna stop him, I'm gonna stop him. Gonna stop him. <laughs> no, I think this is one of the dragons. Yeah, but it's cutting us off. We don't know it's cutting us off. Well, off. What if this was a... So, a, I'm, I'm ready to get my test, test done. What if this was a test of sorts? So, what kind of test? Test. Hmm. What if it's, it's a courage test? What if it's something, uh, you know, we really want the thing we're searching for, and this is testing us to see if we really want it? It's so many things. I live for tests. I'll give you... I put on my glasses. I'm going to do this, and I'm going to look at the sun, and I'm going to be like, where's the current position of the sun? Current position of the sun places it at about 3 p.m. Right. I don't know why. I'm going to eyeball it based upon 
just where it is from what I'm looking at. I'm gonna give you five minutes. Okay. To figure your thing out. Okay. <laughs> and then I'm gonna put a hole through this water because I can. All right. Enjoy your cigarette while I can. <laughs> I throw on my glasses <laughs> and I wanna look at the wall of water. The wall of water is rushing and moving, much like the images that you saw in the smoke, yeah. but contained. It's made a moving yet still and solid yeah. object. Can I see how deep this wall of water goes? Oh yes. The wall of water cuts off every staircase down from the mountaintop with about 50 feet to spare in every direction. It goes down as deep as the base of the mountain and then the ocean beyond. So we're just trapped. Completely isolated by it. Your magic coat, does it let you breathe underwater? Wouldn't be, I will tell you right now, not breathe, but it would protect you from sun elements of this. Like a riptide. It's not 50 breathe. feet. Could I hold my breath and run through, run slash swim through this? Do you want to try to dive in? For 50. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to. Oh, I know where you're going with this, actually. <laughs> I'm trying to think of anything. No, I, you have an ability. I do, right? Yeah. The question is, what uh, what um, skill do you want to bestow with it? What skill? Remember that 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 also comes with a magical property befitting the skill that you pick. Here, while you guys are considering, feel free to talk about character. I'm gonna run to the bathroom, and then we'll hit our, our finale. Okay. Ah oh, man. I don't know what do you. Think? Um, sorry, I should freak out on something. Oh, you have to make a call. No, no, it's okay. She'll be okay. She, she freaked out on this literally. Um, I mean, so what are your abilities? So I've got fun fact catalog, which I just did, and then I've got knowledge is power. So I can, I can pull it up. So with fun fact, I pretty much get to say anything as fact for the most part, as long as I pitch it correctly. For knowledge is power, I get to conjure a magical booklet that may be read in mere seconds, temporarily conveying an entire body of knowledge to the reader, as well as fitting a beneficial magical effect. I feel like knowledge is power is my play right now. Uh, which, which thing do you think? Memos, right? Um, memos is the, yeah. One on which one? All right, what do you got for me? I mean, I want to do knowledge is power. Excellent. And what are you going to be? What skill are you going to be creating a, uh, a scroll for? Uh, and you're saying one of the stats, right? No, no. This can be any real life proficiency. Oh you my can do god! Swimming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Really like like divers lungs. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. you could basically do that and then use your so uh, it will reading teach, glasses. It will teach whoever reads it to swim very proficiently, and you get to choose a magical power fitting of swimming to go on top of that. One read and done, right? Or can we both read? One, one, read, one read and done. Come out with. My thing is, you should do knowledge power, use your reading glasses to just look through a fucking encyclopedia of stuff instantly. I just use my glasses. Oh, and you can't read it. They got a cooldown. The, the glasses do not have a cooldown, but knowledge is power will never conjure a very large yeah, tree. It's, right. it's like a small thing that anyone could read through very fast. I'm giving it to you. Oh my god. Okay. I'm giving it to you. I'm going to conjure up a pamphlet to be the Michael Phelps of this island, and I'm going to give it to you. And what magical power will be conveyed if he reads it? What magical power? A swimming, a swimming appropriate magical power. You get to pitch this. This is yours. Um, I mean the lungs of a the lungs of a a, a beluga whale. We'll take it. <laughs> like the like the lung power Ooh, capacity. A, a magical uh, a magical like pamphlet scroll book whatever is fitting of your character's theme. Yeah. Right? Appears in your hand. What do you like to do now that? It, it, oh, I'm, I'm not even gonna look at it. It appears in my hand. And I'm saying read this. You gotta go get that weapon. I'm like. I'll see you in a bit, but I'm going to read through it. And as you read it, the words jump into your brain as though eager to join you. This is like you, when you smoke that fire. Okay. It is, except in this case, it doesn't make you beside yourself. You just look at this water with like a new lease on life. You're like, this is easy. You this, know what to do with this. I got this. It's like, I'll see you on the other side. I'm going to take out my coach gun. 
opposite the wall. Yeah. Basically as to blast me, to give me a burst, to shoot through the water like Michael Fox would come off the wall. Yeah. Or off the block, right? You hit the water and immediately you feel it try to pull you. Mm -hmm. But your coat makes those hands have trouble pulling them. You see what I mean? So you are able to swim. You can swim out, but that would obviously bring you to a sheer drop. Are you going to be trying to swim down? Where do you want to go within the wall of water? Basically, because of how my character is, dumb as a brick, point A to point B, fastest route to get there, I'm just doing that. And then I'll let Lady Luck decide the rest. So. I don't even know if I can shoot through the water. I'm gonna unload a second shot on my coach gun again. Yeah. Trying to continue that thing. I'm just going point A, B as quick as possible. The shot is a dud, but you still get a little bit of zoom on it. <laughs> and you pop out the other side of the wall into a free fall. However, as you are going towards that free fall, you see that below you, the water has a little bit of a step. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And standing on that step, feet on the water as though it were solid, is Ossigan looking up towards you. As you are falling towards him, he's about 20 feet below you, he calls up towards you, the island holds many secrets, and begins to bring his other And as I see that, that I'm going to immediately go, and it's <laughs> up. Mid-air pointing down at him. Say the line. I'm going to say the line. I'm going to use my standoff ability. Yep. Say the line. Right? Uh, and I'll pull my gun, and basically I'm going to unload the whole mag, but right before I do it, I'm going to aim really carefully and go, it's high noon somewhere, and just friggin' unleash every single bullet with the intent of just taking him out. And as one hits, two hits, three hits, the standoff is broken by your attack. He is going to be able to attack back. However, every bullet that strikes him, you see, starts to close before your eyes. He gives kind of a, almost an apologetic smile. And he says, my good friend, as he goes in for a swing, I've been torn to pieces far worse than that. Mm. His blade comes whipping up towards you, his gigantic stone key, as you are dropping. What do you want to try to do? Am I able to use the bandolier to refill my coach gun? That will, it will fulfill the bandolier. The coach gun will still need to be reloaded. Do I have enough time to reload the coach gun? This is a mid-air drop, and you have the revolver out. I do not think that you could get another hand to better reload the coach gun. Like a bit. <sighs> I'm doing a memo. Yep. What's your memo? That you can have been writing this while he was. Yes. Writing. Yes. I'm doing a memo. Um, how how specific do I have to be on the location of someone? You have to. I'm not going to give like a precise answer. Give me who you're looking for. I'm looking for, um, 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 woo, what's his name? You just said it. Austin. Yeah. And I'm thinking beach, right? I'm thinking he's down the beach. He's away from me. You would hear his voice call up. So okay. You know so I'm thinking of a memo, 10 words of nothing. Yep. I want that memo to pop up right in his face. <laughs> wow. That's awesome. Okay. In that case. As he swings, you see a little piece of paper pop over his eyes. The gigantic stone key whips up towards you, and I will tell you right now, this is going to hit. So I'm going to do this. So I'm going to use shoot out, which teleports a sheathed weapon into your hands. Yep. While the ability to last a fresh bullet is conjured in place whenever you cock a fire. Yep. So I'm going to use that. Coach gun? Coach gun. And then I'm basically going to basically fire it with the intent of avoiding the yep. hit. You're falling, so there's a bunch of ways you can avoid. If he's swinging up at you, are you darting down? Are you darting over? Are you darting up and away? So my dumbass is trying to basically, I have faith that my shot's going to hit his hand to potentially disarm him while also launching me up a little bit to avoid the attack. And my intent is to, while his face is covered, fall, grab his weapon, and be like, later, and then jump back into the water stream. Let's begin with the shot. It does hit his hand. 
his shot, and in the process you get a little bit of extra height. His, his swing kind of goes awry and one of his hands is mangled and falls off of his weapon. You get a little bit of an extra boost, but you quickly start to fall. You're going to land on his head, effectively. I ain't got shit else, man. I'm going to busy try to land on his shoulders. Wait, does he still have his the weapon in his hand? He has the weapon in his left hand. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that. And then as I'm on his shoulder, I'm like, I'm going to... How fast can I reload this weapon? Oh, you so, don't need to. You have shoot at shoot at right, last so I'm gonna it. You can keep on reloading and it just keeps popping. Can I use my revolver or no? I have to, I can only use the shot. The um, you had your revolver in your hand when you conjured the coach gun. You fired one shot, so you're a kimbo. Right All right, so I'm basically gonna go and with my revolver now, just be like eat lead, and I'm gonna <laughs> shoot at his other hand to basically disarm him completely. This would take like three shots to get each of his gigantic fingers off of it, but you can go <laughs> All right. And the, the key drops towards the water. All right, so I'm gonna quickly put that away, be like, later, later, big guy. And <laughs> like the, the game name I gave him before. Yeah. Push off of his shoulders with my legs, go to grab that thing, and get into the water to swim back to my to him. <laughs> the key is grabbed and you dive into the water, but this thing weighs like 300 pounds. Yes. You're being dragged down, not up. And as you are dragged down, you see a radiant white light from Ossian's belly. The water is trying to lift you back up to him. So up on the top, the bad dragon ate the good dragon. <laughs> Up on the top, oh. a seagull has flown to you, and it drops a note into your hand. Okay, I'm going to catch it, flip it open real quick. It's written in an incredibly hasty script. We are ready to pull out. Get back quick. I'm going to ask the seagull nicely. Nicely, I'm going to ask the seagull, big guy with tattoos, can you poke his eyes out for me? I'll give you all the french fries when we get back to the boat. Please. The seagull bolts <laughs> like, no, this is stupid ass bird! As it is doing so, you feel something. A ping from your chest as your enclave badge goes. Yes. Yes. Now, you've never felt this sensation before. Yes. It's just, it's like, a, like an unread text. Okay. What do you want to do? I'm gonna tap it, see what, see, yeah. And you feel yourself beginning to teleport. In the water, as you are being pulled back up, you feel your enclave badge pain. Can I write a memo? Do I feel like I'm going fast enough that I can get back to where the keyhole is if I'm still holding on and not? God! Then I'm, I'm like, nah. Because I read that book, so I feel like I have the knowledge to be like, I'm not gonna make this. Yes. So I'm gonna collect that badge. And as you do so, you feel yourself teleport, you see Ossian's face, for the first time, angry. And the last thing you see before you vanish is him saying, I should have known you were no good before you vanish from the mission. With the weapon in hand, right? No. No. Oh. It is oh, oh, two, only what you brought originally. Uh, oh. And so on that note, we will end the mission. Nice. All right. Wow. But she pulled away. Right? She did. She pulled away. Mission accomplished. She did not pick up the crazy. Yeah. But a very messy mission accomplished. Yeah. Not the best mission accomplished. You know, guys? Tough situation. You confronted a very, very scary enemy. <laughs> and I'm, I'm quite impressed with how you guys handled it. That was cool. That was fun. That was fun. Yeah. Yeah. Nicely done, fellas. That's fun. Thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Robbie Howell. Chris Fazekas. This has been Enclave. Ciao for now. <laughs> what?